director dr mp singh ji group coordinator research institute of food science and technology sri chetapan aur ji esteemed participants of this webinar distinguished resource person for this webinar my colleagues from institute of food science and technology a very good morning to all of you on behalf of the institute of food science and technology i welcome all of you for this half day webinar on problems and its solution strategies for wooden handicraft sector in india from last one year institute of food science and technology has organized series of trainings and webinars on various topic under azadi ka amrut mahotsav initiative of government of india to celebrate and commemorate 75 years of independence in the past we have covered some very interesting topics on sandalwood cultivation sandalwood protection bamboo cultivation wood seasoning wood treatment and so on iwst being a premier research institute having more than 8 years decades of 8 decades of research experience in wood science wood science and technology we are extremely proud and glad to host this webinar handicraft sector is one of the important sector and it is considered to be backbone of indian rural economy handicraft industry has shown a steady growth rate of 20% every year in last one decade india india's handicraft export is expected to cross rupees 24000 crore by the end of 22 23 financial year so in today's webinar we are artic articulating on very important topic that is problem and its solution strategies for wood handicraft sector in india in this webinar our experts will be talking on various topics at greater length on wooden handicrafts we hope that today's webinar will benefit most of the participants with these few words now i would request dr s r sukla ji for the welcome address thank you very much and good morning to all uh, participating in today's webinar it is a really a happy occasion that iwst is conducting this half day webinar on products on problems and its solution strategies for wood and handicraft sector in india as uh, mr sigumar uh, told this is being organized under the azadi ka amrut mahotsav which is being celebrated in our country and our institute is conducting uh, around 20th such webinar as we know that wood handicraft are unique expressions and uh, represent a culture tradition and heritage of a country the handicraft industry is one of the important productive sector and wood handicraft particularly contributes significantly towards generating the employment and earning the revenue handicraft products can be utilitarian aesthetic artistic creative culturally attached decorative functional traditional we know that wood is one of the eco friendly uh, natural material which is renewable recyclable and sustainable however when it comes to choose the uh, wood uh, of uh, particular species we, uh, it is to be uh, known that all woods are not suitable for every applications we should choose the right wood for for right application and that too at the right price so based on the internal structure and properties of the wood various applications of different woods have been worked out in our institute along with that wood should also be processed using different uh, techniques such as seasoning preservative treatments to uh, to protect it from the uh, degradation and should have good working properties for any uh, given end use applications such as uh, wooden handicrafts so today's webinar on wooden handicraft is being organized for the larger benefit of the uh, handicraft sector 
and all those interested in using this wonderful uh, renewable material as uh, uh, it is uh, in today's webinar there will be uh, many presentations by different speakers who are pioneer and experts in their respective field this will be uh, followed by uh, uh, experience sharing and discussion and question answer session the experienced scientists and experts from the field are going to make presentation and uh, they are going to discuss on various topics such as uh, overview of wooden handicraft sector of india wood quality requirement for handicrafts sawing and seasoning drying of timbers Wooden wood protection by preservative treatments. Lagu Udyog uh, Bharti uh, ro role in developing handicraft uh, sector in our, uh, the country. MSME support for wooden handicraft sector. Wood handicraft uh, uh, sector issues with design and product quality. Common hindrances in wooden handicraft sector in India and its solution strategies. These are the, some of the uh, topics which our experts are going to deliberate and they will, they will be making the presentation. And this will be followed by experience sharing by the expert artisans of various handicraft clusters such, such as E.T. Kopaka, Handicraft, Andhra Pradesh, Chen Patna Craft Park and the Kinal Handicraft Clusters in Karnataka, Hammapati uh, Handicraft Cluster Tamil Nadu, and uh, North India is being represented by uh, Saharanpur Handicraft Cluster, Uttar Pradesh. So, on this occasion, on behalf of IWST, I welcome all the participants from different organizations. Uh, artisans from different clusters, NGOs, participants from the uh, different departments who joined online in today's webinar and they are uh, present here physically to uh, share their experiences. I welcome all the resource persons, especially invited artisans who will be sharing their experience, all the participants from different handicraft clusters wood-based industries, institutions, and other stakeholders. I also welcome uh, uh, our director, Dr. M.P. Singh Ji, Group Coordinator of Research, Sri uh, V. S. Setapanavarji, all head of divisions, officers, scientists, research and technical staff members, student scholars from IWST and uh, other organizations. I Especially welcome uh, Sri A.K. Bansal sir, uh, Sri Nagesh Prabhu sir, Dr. S.P. Singh ji, and other dignitaries who have joined us online. It is a happy occasion for us uh, to see you, uh, sir. So, I request you all uh, for uh, the active participation in today's webinar. Once again, on behalf of IWST, I extend my hearty welcome to one and all. And also thank for joining this today's web and, uh, webinar. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Suklaji, for your uh, quick and brief welcome address. Uh, now I would request our GCR, Shri V. S. Setapanwarsar, for quick opening remarks. Setapanwarsar, please. Uh, good morning to our respected director and uh, respected participants and uh, my colleagues uh, regarding handicrafts uh, as you know handicrafts are the uh, decorative items they are prevailing since ancient times so if you see any culture or uh, civilization uh, they were really uh, important uh, items in the uh, field of decoration of the house and uh, even though the culture and civilization lost, but during the excavation, whenever they got the handicrafts from those handicrafts, the culture prevailing at that time were depicted. How? Because whatever the things 
that was that was going around was imbibed in the handicrafts so the artisans of that time uh, those were uh, preparing the handicrafts they were they were held very high because uh, the, the the type of technology they used uh, even still people are wondering how they could achieve such a precision and uh, how could they make such a things even the type of material they used the wood that was used in the ancient time like in uh, Egypt and even in uh, our uh, own uh, industrial civilization, that wood is still prevailing. And sometimes some of the civilization, w when they painted and the, what type of paint they used, uh, still it is eco-friendly. And the wood is also a very important thing. When artisan is uh, working on the wood, it should not harm him. As in such a way, they utilize the wood also. The type of wood. In, in, even in those times, used was uh, not a, this one, very valuable wood. It was a common wood that was prevailing in the uh, surrounding. And the, the, the type of technology was adopted uh, in, in the, the handicraft. Uh, so sometimes uh, during excavation, they found it and they interpreted with the other field of uh, technology that was existing in those days. These handicrafts really they depicted the culture and uh, the, the type of day-to-day uh, uh, -day life was existing. So that's how the history was built based on the, because the civilization and people they lost, uh, they, the, the things were lost, but still the handicrafts and all that they were prevailing. Another thing is, the whatever the artisans they were prevailing, they didn't teach it to others. They only taught it to their family members and their relatives and their close colleagues. So still, we have a pockets of handicraft manufacturing uh, people and uh, areas which are very specific in India also. It is not uh, spread everywhere. If you see in Kinal and in our Karnataka, Mysore area, see the very particular communities and people, they only know, others are not knowing uh, this type of technology. Even the kings also protected them, and they were very uh, highly held in the society. Uh, with this, I will close my remark. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your quick opening rem remarks, and also articulating on importance of handicraft in art and in history, as well as civilization and culture. Thank you once again, sir. Now I would request our director, Dr. M.P. Singh, sir, to uh, address the participants. Over to Dr. M.P. Singh, sir, please. Good morning, everybody. It's really a great opportunity for IWST to organize such webinar on the problems and its solution strategies for wooden handicrafts. Here I can see there are representation from various states, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka, and then I think they could not include Rajasthan. Otherwise we could have have the all India presence of the handicraft sector. And it is a learning exercise for IWST also, that we really need to understand what are the problems. And then we can strive together to find the solution for the wooden handicrafts. India has got big advantage as far as the handicraft sector is concerned. We have very rich cultural diversity. All the parts of the country, they are very unique as far as the culture is concerned, as far as heritage is concerned. And they have all handicrafts specific to the area, specific to the history. So that provides a good opportunity for appreciation by 
the world and that is why if you see we have been able to export our handicrafts to the tune of almost 1000 million us dollar in year 2020-21 so but we need, we really need to understand what are the handicaps what are the constraints because of which we are not able to utilize the full potential of this sector and this is very labor intensive and even a cottage industry also it is very organized unorganized so that is the advantage also that people get work at their own place so with a kind of ecosystem prevailing in the country especially for the startups for going into the new area of trade and innovation this provides a very good opportunity that we understand all the problems of this sector and try to to find solution how we can upscale our contribution to the economy and to the world we, we should have good share in the world trade as far as the Indian handicrafts are concerned. So I really look forward to this discussion. And but I can see the program, it is very tight. So we have to stick to the time, otherwise we we will not be getting time for the experience hearing. So I request all the experts to limit to the their discussion in short and limit to the to the time frame that is provided in the program so that at the end we have the meaningful discussion with all the experts and the and the practitioners with this i wish success of today's webinar and I once again welcome all of you in today's webinar on behalf of IWST. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, sir, for articulating on problems and challenges associated with the uh, handicraft sector in India and its importance, especially in trade and commerce. Thank you very much, sir, once again. Uh, without any delay, we will start our technical session. So to conduct technical session, I will hand over the mic to Srimati Triveni. Over to Triveni. Triveni, please. Thank you, sir. The first speaker of the day will be Dr. T.K. Damodaran. Uh, Dr. T.K. Damodaran was a chief scientist in Wood Science and Technology Division of the Kerala Forest Research Institute, and he superannuated in 2019. He continued his research work as a uh, chief consultant scientist in KFRI and then as chair of excellence of ICFRI in forest products at IWST Bangalore. He is a chemist and wood technologist by education and doctoral work. His PhD work was in the preservative treatment and chemical modification of rubber wood. His area of work in KFRI included wood science and technology. He also worked in shockwave assisted wood and bamboo treatment and wood waste uh, utilization. He was responsible for developing uh, DPS for many wood industries in Kerala, introduced mechanical bamboo processing in Kerala, and developed an oil curing technique for improving durability and imparting an ivory white skin color for rotten uh, products, which is of great demand in the domestic and export market, and developed the method for coloring bamboo slivers with uh, natural dyes. Uh, today, he'll be giving an overview of wood and handicraft sector of India. Uh, over to you, sir. Uh, good morning. Uh, is I am audible? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, respected director, sir, and uh, all my colleagues there. I, uh, I remember all of you, and I am in good condition. 
ഭാരതി ഓഫീസേഴ്സ് വെർ participating and of course there were two field trips also to support the this handicraft sector in one field trip i was able to participate and there was another extensive field trip the newly recruited scientists and also the report was available with the wood is good so now this is the right time to start new projects to support the sector that is actually really required and uh, let me uh, we will uh, now discuss that uh, uh, in the later portion of this one so now i would like to go through the wooden handicraft sector what is happening or what is the state of affairs then we have the next slides next one please yeah the wooden handicraft sector actually what is handicraft handicraft is the traditional art of creating useful objects for decorative items entirely by hand and especially when it is made with wood it is wooden handicraft and the skilled labor is always employed to carve wood to create items with the bare minimum tools and each piece of handicraft is unique owing to its individualistic craftsmanship and wooden handicraft sector we should rem uh, remember that it overlaps with the wooden furniture also and the toys and construction sector also because everybody may be knowing that we have a, a good heritage buildings with a good handicrafts so basically this is associated with expressing the skills as well as giving very good mental satisfaction to the artisans who reveals is uh, on self as well as it is an employment opportunity getting some livelihood also so all this is associated with the handicraft sector so when we do it we should realize that it is an industry too it gives uh, it's a small scale traditional industry playing an or significant role in the indian economy and it is a low capital investment and a low capital resources and the high ratio of value addition it is a major source of foreign exchange earnings and india's handicraft exports show a consistent increase of 15% every year but its share in the international market is not much it is only just around 2% and second largest employment provider after agriculture employs about 6 million workers directly and indirectly and about uh, uh, about uh, uh, 4344.4 million rupees worth of handicrafts in 2000 to 2021 we have exported that much value material and uh, we have around 1 lakh carving centers and uh, the export to revenue share of the wood based handicraft is close to 40% of the total handicrafts industry and it provides a direct a directly about 5 million artisans employment opportunity the next one please next slide please yeah and the major hubs where these are produced as a cluster we have the sharanpur meerut and nagina up famous for intricate carving and inlay work jodhpur and jaipur in rajasthan for wooden puppets carving and jali screens hoshiarpur and amritsar of punjab for wood inlay and lacquer work and uh, srinagar and jammu kashmir for walnut decorative items of course arunachal pradesh and bastar and uh, chatisgarh daspali in puri uh, for antiques and also in west bengal assam many places are cited here this this gives the impression that the hubs are distributed or represented in the entire cross section of the country it has got a pan india uh, presence next slide yeah you can just to see the many of the typical representatives of the various hubs uttar pradesh sharanpur arunachal pradesh 
and uh, next one we can just uh, just for visually fit some of these things which are what is all happening in different parts of the country in Rajasthan in uh, of course in West Bengal and you can see that in construction also the handicrafts the beautiful pillars uh, and the beams were uh, engraved and also uh, good inlay works of Punjab and uh, Blackboard works of Shiyapur, Chhattisgarh, Bastar. And uh, you have it in Assam, Odisha, Puji, and uh, in Andhra Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir. Also in Tamil Nadu, which is very famous for temple architect, uh, these uh, handicrafts in temples and uh, religion connected things. And in Karnataka, it's very famous for its uh, sandalwood uh, uh, idols and uh, uh, handicrafts works and uh, wood inlay works, wooden toys of Chanya Patana, sandal carvings, rosewood inlay works, and things like that. And uh, of course, in Kerala, we have uh, we have uh, hubs in Kochi, Trishur, and Tiruvannathapuram, where uh, many famous. Uh, these uh, carvings and uh, related products of uh, animal shapes like elephants in festivals and things like that. And in Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat, the famous Havailis and uh, window carvings and old Chana Patana wooden toys. And of course, Himachal Pradesh is also famous, Sikkim. And Nagaland, uh, Northeast uh, states, and uh, Maharashtra has good, good good carvings. So these are all some of the next one, please. These are all some of the typical representatives. What is happening? What are the different uh, cultures of carving in different uh, states or huts? Then of course another thing is that uh, GI tagging is very important because tagging is a sign used on products that have a specific geographical origin and possesses qualities or a reputation that are due to that origin and it further facilitates international acceptability along with its provisions of benefit sharing to the producers and uh, as everybody knows that the wooden toys of Tanya Patana, Innal and inlay works of Mysore, Pondapilli toys Andhra Pradesh uh, of Andhra Pradesh and the best are wooden handicrafts of Chhattisgarh. As similarly, so many places, so many tags were given to handicrafts. And the only thing is that we should still continue to uh, utilize this opportunity and researchers and uh, extension scientists should consider to continue the tagging works and support to the industry to make better profits. And there's a scenario of Indian wooden toy manufacturing, which is also a small sector. And uh, we have also uh, hubs in uh, this Nirmal, Kondapalli, Chit, uh, then uh, uh, this Rajamundri, Tirupadi, Channa Patana, Mysore, and uh, Kanyagumari, Kochir in Kerala, and there's so many cities in other parts of the country. So to uh, protect their interest and uh, to have the sustainability, we, we have to identify the challenges and we have to find out the solutions. When I look into this field, what I feel the challenges are, the major challenges the scarcity of traditionally used raw material due to over exploitation of the locally available ideal species, such as the Givotia rotiliformis in Nirmal and Kondapalli, and the Raitinia tinctoria in Tekopita and Andhra, in Andhra Pradesh. These are the traditional raw materials are exploited without any limit, and now the people are not uh, in a position to get the required raw material, and they don't have much idea about the alternative species that can be considered and uh, so the need of extended research and development works in tra and training support including social and design trends and skills common facility and incubation of startups testing and certification centers facilities to evaluate the carving and turning and other wood qualities of alternative ground timbers that can substitute traditional species efforts to promote the use of alternative plantation ground species suitable for the sector and establish sustainably managing plantations, marketing linkages, exposure to social and design trends, etc. are the most important issues that we have to consider. 
next slide please uh, this is the one which i have just now explained next one yeah now we have to look into the plantation species plantation species needs to be done on a commercial scale among the artisans making available certified wood for toy making as well as geographical tagging certifications for better export and domestic markets and benefits of using treated and seasoned timber needs to be popularized among the artisans providing technological and training and exhibition supports are also important next one and the timber legality issues in indian handicraft sector is also very important since our risk in the use of illegal wood for handicrafts intended for export penalty and prosecution in abroad difficult to get certified wood and uh, we should uh, remember that the rich timber legality assessment and verification scheme of the export promotion council for handicraft uh, the value chain the chain of custody certification for handicraft timbers are available we should make use of it as well as the nccf certification program for toifs trees outside forest for wood from agroforestry sector these are also available so the use of certified agro wood from agroforestry sector for handicraft manufacture uh, need to be considered it is the solution for the majority of threats to the wooden handicraft sector the solution is plantation timber as well as agroforestry timber or uh, toifs and these should be promoted next one The bamboo is also another resource for handicrafts because of its uh, many of its properties like hardness, density, workability of different species are suitable. And design interventions are of prime significant uh, significance in the bamboo handicrafts. And government of India has amended the Forest Act, omitting bamboo from definition of tree so that it will benefit uh, so many artisans. Bamboo can be grown in degraded marginal land with appropriate enabling policies. It can provide eco-friendly, renewable, alternative, natural growth. For wooden handicraft sector, bamboo support livelihood of people living in the vicinity of forest through income and job opportunities. Bamboo hubs all the states of northeastern, stay uh, northeastern uh, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Maharashtra, Karnataka, and Kerala. And uh, many uh, principal species are also identified. Species of appropriate suitability were identified, and it can be utilized. In next one, and about two million people which is about 30% of the total number of artisans in the country depends on bamboo for livelihood. India ranked as the fifth largest importer of bamboo products worth over US dollar 23 million. Some of the bamboo handicrafts, the potential is seen, are shown here and from which the potential is known. Everybody might have been seen these type of products, which is which we should exploit for export and other type of revenue earning. And some of the bamboo handicrafts are also furniture. It is uh, possible to make uh, furniture as well as uh, ornaments, uh, jewelry type of things and all, which all gives local livelihoods. And also another thing is the cane handicrafts. The retents are also uh, important uh, resources, a unique mix of the physical and mechanical characteristics such as the strength, durability, flexibility, etc. makes retent very good raw material, primarily for the furniture and handicrafts industries. And it's uh, uh, golden yellow color lightweight and durability make it uh, dearer to furniture and handicrafts industry a large number of international trade in bamboo and return product is misclassified under the un's harmony harmonized commodity description and uh, coding systems hs codes hence the un's hs code system must be revised to allow better monitoring of bamboo and return products this is a need in the handicraft sector there were about 24 hs codes for bamboo and return in 2018 providing greater transparency about trade efforts are continuing to add more hs codes this, is, this should be considered because otherwise the data on these aspects will not be a possible it will not be possible to make it available and some of the return handicrafts products are shown here it's also a very good the export revenue uh, earning field and of course as uh, somebody was mentioning in the introduction that an oil curing technology is available which can made use of or uh, no, uh, products of very good skin color. And a consolidated list of around 63 wood species 
which are you know it including tra traditionally used species new plantation species and other species suggested by icfre according to their suitability of properties in indian handicrafts including toys are reported it is available but the constraints are insufficient raw material availability shifting of the units towards other species which is again affecting the quality of end products lack of experience and forest certification and sourcing of coc certified timber consequent less availability of regulated wood for export products absence of skills in assessing the suitability of wood raw material characteristics by the working sector people lack of standard policies and the difficulty with interact integrating timber certification adding the risks in wooden handicrafts export poor infrastructural facilities for organized production the use of updated technologies and machineries improved design intervention training opportunities in human resource skill and management upgradation etc are the fields need to be addressed and the solutions are promotion of tree growing in agro ecosystems to supply raw material for wood carving for wooden handicrafts manufacture is the prime is of prime concern the legal issues pertaining to harvesting and transportation of timber needs to be rectified by proper enactment the available information on the suitability of various species for carving and turning or their or their woodworking properties needs to be popularized and experimented among the wooden handicrafts artisans improved design interventions are required trainings on the use of operation of simple modern woodworking machinery is appropriate to handicraft sector trainings concerning wood preservation and seasoning then the sdp cdp mdp etc needs to be uh, conducted frequently forest plantation tofs and coc certification needs to be promoted for making available regulated wood next one please ah uh, so finally the handicrafts are also important in buildings also and of course there also the constraint is the requirement or the availability of uh, large diameter long rotation timber species suitable for handicrafts works in building components this can be met with by utilizing the set aside 10 percent of the area for plantation working circle as per the national working plan code of 2014 for growing such species tripartite agreement can be developed by including forest department local stakeholders and wood user company for forest areas mandated under plantation working circles so this is what i wanted to convey and to conclude with the what we require is uh, validating and revalidating uh, trials for convincing the artisans and small units with the whatever technologies whatever alternative species suggested should be popularized among the artisans among the ngos among the workforce to make use of these timbers we have uh, investigated the properties and suggested many species but it has not reached up to uh, the level of artisans or the uh, groups or the units so this needs to be done that what is required is action oriented research programs and uh, i suggest that you no know, i have seen very good uh, group uh, represented in this meeting and there are very good speakers also so representing all these people there should be very successful convincing efforts to popularize the alternative species plantation timbers etc so that it will be an opportunity for utilizing the plantation timbers and alternative other tofs and all these things and the people or the artisans will be benefited we will be continuing our heritage and cultural uh, bag, uh, this uh, tradition as well as uh, it will be a good opportunity to make use of the better export revenue better uh, foreign exchange and things like that so the livelihood will be improved our research efforts will uh, reach thank you very much thank you very much for giving this opportunity once more and thank uh, you you have, you, you have really delivered your talk in in the time frame given to you thank you very much congratulations for that
Namaste, sir. I'm Srinivasan here. Can I go ahead with my presentation? Uh, am I audible now? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Mr. B. S. Srinivasan has a bachelor's degree in science uh, from Bangalore University and 38 years experience in managing Wipro of Electronics, which is a small scale industry engaged in manufacturing basic telecommunication equipment and devices for line termination, solar photovoltaic power plants, lithium ion battery packs for telecom and electronic vehicles. It's a company certified by NSIC for single point registration for government purchase and KSPCB for green industry. He is actively involved and a member of many prestigious organizations in the related field. Notably, he is the founding member of CMT at IIM Bangalore, a LUB Karnataka initiative. Uh, now he is the vice president of Lagu Udyog Bharti Karnataka since 2013 and is the head of the Industry Academia Interface for Design Intervention with Embedded Systems and uh, Internet in toy clusters of Kinhal and Chanapatna. Today, he'll be talking on the LUB roles in developing handicraft sector in India. Over to you, sir. Namaste, and I thank uh, Dr. Singh and Dr. Shukla and the team from IWST for inviting us into the event today. And on behalf of Lagu Jog Bharati, we congratulate the IWST and all the distinguished faculty for having uh, given us an opportunity to explain Lagu Jog Bharati's role in helping the handicraft sector. Lagu Jog Bharati is an all India organization in the service of micro and small industries. We are working out of close to 450 districts in the country. And Lagu Jog Bharati Karnataka is one of the leading. Uh, organization to help the artisans of uh, Kinnala and uh, Chanpatna, which we have taken up now under the Grama Shilpi Prakoshta, that is one of the activity of Lagu Yog Bharati to help artisans and entrepreneurs from the cottage and the rural industry. And I request uh, the presentation to start with the first slide, ma'am. Can you hear me, Triveni? Lagudyog Bharati has been working with uh, the artisans and the clusters of the toy industry from the last two years to regarding in the uh, difficult times of COVID, how we can help the micro and small industries wherewithal and the facility from Lagudyog Bharati to help the artisans come out of the difficult times that were going under uh, COVID for marketing their products and also how they can enrich their value addition of the product by using some design intervention. In the last two years of our activity with the Lagu Yog Bharti, we have conducted of close to about half a dozen webinars and we have closely worked with IWST, Forest Department, then the Rotary Club of Bangalore, then the clusters in Kinala, Chanpatna, and also the Sharanpur cluster had interacted with the Kinala and Chanpatna cluster, how we can all work together to promote their business in the coming years. As you know, as you are aware that we are just about 2% in the global economy from the handicraft part of uh, the contribution to the economy. This could possibly in the next 10 years become a $1 trillion economy if you continue to focus at the same rate what we are doing now with the support from the government, from the industry per se, Lagu Yog Bharati, and also the artisans have to come forward. Some of the issues that Lagu Yog Bharati has found in the last two years of research that we have done in the sector is the, we don't find the second generation of artisans coming into the manufacturing these toys. That is due to the, the uh, whole revenue per se in the handicraft sector has been going down and this sector needs to be revived on a very, very, very quick and uh, immediate basis. So in our activity, we found that the college curriculum, particularly in the rural areas, need to include at least one of the skills of wood turning or wood craft in the in future. And in the uh, activity, what we have done uh, in the last two years, Indian Institute of Science under MSME COEs, that is MSME Center for Excellence, 
has come with us to join with Labudio Bharati to help the artisans develop new products and processes which can have a huge potential for the market in the world market in the future. In one of the interview Prime Minister Modi had with the Chanpatna cluster and also the Kinnada cluster, he clearly told the Chanpatna cluster people that why, when you are so close to Bangalore, why have you not put electronics and embedded systems and internet of things in your toys so that this young generation of the toy, the people, the children who are looking in the world market can get into the idea that how we can use a toy as a building block for the learning session in the coming year. So in one of the sessions at Kinnada, we spoke to close to about 100 artisans where Dr. Jamkhandi was speaking to them. We definitely came out with an idea in the, in the program itself, about nearly half a dozen ideas were got from the artisans and from the, uh, the MSME industries per se. So to take it to the next level, in the, this is the slide where Jamkandi is explaining how the ideation process is all about and how we can do value creation in the toy sector per se. All along in the last 300, 400 years, we have been making the same wooden toys, which has got the same market and there is no ingenuity or the innovation in this uh, per se. And uh, uh, Dr. T.K. Dhamurdhanam said that very important for the survival of any industry is the innovation or a continuous improvement in every step of the way. Next slide, please. So this gentleman who is sitting right in front of us is close to about 73 years old called Shesha Pachitragar. And he had a definite plea with the, the all of us on the stage how he has to survive by making the fruit baskets in the uh, coming days because he was selling this product for about 300 to 500 rupees in the market and there was very little value that he could add from his point of view. On the, when we had discussed with the artisans in that particular forum, we told them that this product can be made into a talking fruit. You take a fruit and keep it onto a basket. It will tell you all about the fruit, the nutrition value, the, where it is grown, how it is grown, where, which are the farmers, what are the price going and what are the other details, how it, or what kind of fruits, maybe banana of uh, half a dozen variety, then uh, coconuts of two or three different varieties, papaya, sita pearl, whatever it is. So this particular item called the uh, brainstorming, called the uh, talking fruits is going to be demonstrated to them in the coming days in about uh, one month's time. This project has been taken personally by our company to help these artisans make a uh, talking fruit which is an IoT model, and it will also be interactive on your smartphone. Next slide, please. And this is a very important part for not only IWST, but all the industry per se, for us to think why we are talking about this particular point. The geographical index point of for the particular Kinal cluster is for, for the tin painting that they have, which is a unique process in the world. So this particular tin uh, sheets are pounded by a hammer close to about eight to 10 hours to make it into a liquid. And then it is painted on the wooden object, which this particular painting is almost like lifelong, maybe 50 years, 100 years. The shine does not go away. The finish does not wane. And this is a highly valued product of Kinala, which we need to preserve. So here we are discussing how, next slide please. At present, it's completely done by handwork. You can see the hammers that they use, and they have to have about two person human being who has to pound that tin from morning till night, eight to 10 hours continuously to get a liquid form. And that is used for making the paint, which is the raw form. You can see Santosh Chitagar holding one raw form of the uh, particular doll. That can be finished into a world-class product with this particular technology. And the second most important point about this paint is, uh, once, one minute man, before I finish Kinala, I'm back to the slide again. This very important point is, earlier days of Kinala, they used to use stone powder for painting the wooden toys. But nowadays they are using lead-based Asian paint, which does not have much of value creation in the world market per se, because these toys are going to be handled by children. We need to give them a solution wherein they can use environmentally friendly paint. 
Thank you. Next slide, please. This is the second intervention that we have done it in the Chanpatna cluster with Dr. Prabhakar speaking at the Chanpatna cluster, wherein this particular toys had to be innovated with how we can use Internet of Things into these toys and also embedded systems to make it more value addition. Here we can see even Trikala Kalidal, who is one of the cluster members. And here I need to say one important point is whenever we do a cluster based facility for uh, the activity of the or the improvement of the cluster, we need to think what is the requirement. Unfortunately, the Chanpatna cluster, we have a huge cluster facility, which it is more like um, made for the construction industry and it is not very helpful for the artisans per se in Chanpatna because they need a small kiln when they can season their wood. At present, they are using the natural process of putting in the sun and drying it naturally, which takes a very long process for getting the wood of their desired humidity and content to ma manufacture the toys. Next, please. You can see the number of toys of Chanpatna, almost each one of them we can introduce uh, IoT in that, or we can do embedded system. And some of the projects, about half a dozen projects which we are working from Lagudyo Bharati, is we are working on talking fruits and the birds with uh, different types of sound and the candle st stand with the LED lighting system, then the wheel with the light and sound, how we can make the wooden toys with light and sound, and how about thinking about storytelling toys. You have number of story uh, toys which can be kept in a place and what if they tell a story to a young child? So his whole imagination of the toy and the value of the creation of the toy itself will be totally changed. And this could be one of the very innovative ideas for joining into the, getting into a bigger share of the world market. Next, please. So this is the second project as I was telling you how we can develop a toy from ground level zero. This is all developed by the Chanpatna cluster with the design intervention from our team. And what we have done is we have made a toy in which the beak can be replaced, the head can be replaced, the body can be replaced, the wings can be replaced. And it will tell you different kinds of birds, it will give you different kinds of sounds, it will give you different features, where they live and what they have habitat about. You know, this is a new product innovation for the Chanpatna cluster. Next, please. And how can we help? Lagudyo Bharti has been always thinking from past one and a half years how to help the artisan market their product because this is one of the biggest problem that we face when we have gone to all the in the field survey. When we went to the cross-functional team from Lagudyo Bharti, that means I was from the electronic sector, we had a women entrepreneur who will look after the Kusuri Mane, who was looking from the marketing point of view. Then we had a person from the automation and the robotics looking at how we can put automation and robotics into the product. And the another person was looking into how was the, what are the kind of manufacturing excellence we can bring into the cluster. So when we had uh, seen all the things, the one weakest link was that they had got excellent uh, skills, excellent skills in Chanpatna and Kinala, but they lack very poor marketing skills. So we thought, why don't we organize one event in Gramashilpi Mela 2021? This was organized in, uh, on uh, 8th, and 9th and 10th of April in 2021. And close to 115 artisans were invited from across the North Karnataka, Hubli, Dharwad and nearby areas, Kinala, and all those artisans were there. And we had provided accommodation, we had provided food, we had given them the stall free of charge. And then the, the artisans have sold more than 60 lakh rupees worth material at the uh, venue. And this opportunity, I think we need to do it about three or four times in a year across the state of Karnataka and this model can be replicated across the India to see the trillion dollar economy coming soon in the next five to 10 years. Next slide, please. So here you can see the Swamiji inaugurating along with uh, Prahlad Joshi had come all the way from Delhi to inaugurate the exhibition, Chakdish Shetar and our president had been to inaugurate the event. Next slide, please. 
these are the artisans who are doing the work at the venue for three days. They were making all the products and selling it on the spot. Next, please. So these are the team members of uh, the top slide shows you the team members who are involved in the drama uh, uh, Shilpi Mela at Hubbali. And the bottom slide shows that we can see the team from Indian Shop Science uh, led by Professor uh, uh, Jamadagni is a retired chairman from the DSE, DESE. Then you can also see Dr. Prabhakar, uh, Mr. Jamkandi, then the convener for Chanpatna cluster, Mr. Naveen, and also Bhupati and our team. And we are standing below the tree, the Alemara, which is being used for the product. And now we come to the very important point that I have found from Chanpatna and also from uh, the Kinala cluster is they are not able to get wood to make their products because the forest has the uh, forest department has banned extraction of wood and neither the agroforestry scheme from the government of India or government of Karnataka has taken off. Okay. So there's a huge opportunity that we can work in this together in this particular activity. And I thank IWST for working with Lagu Udyog Bharati and also meeting us, you know, on a regular basis, telling us what we have to do, how we can do, and how we can promote this industry into a world-class thing. And our dream is to see $1 trillion coming out of this particular sector in the coming days. I thank you very much and I thank our team from Labu Diog Bharti who had worked very hard for the last one and a half, two years to make it happen. Thank you, Director and the team from IWST for this opportunity. Thank you, sir. My contact details are also here with you. Thank you, sir. Now we move on to the next uh, topic. This will be by uh, Mr. R. Gopinath. He is Deputy Director of MSME Development Institute of Government of India, Bangalore. Uh, he has a B.Tech in textiles by education and has worked for 10 years in well-known textile units like Bini Limited, Bangalore, Serums Textile Mills, Mumbai, and in the garment manufacturing units of Gokuldas Images, Shahi Exports, and Sunwear Knit, uh, Sunwear Knit Limited. Now, since 25 years, he is working in MSME Development Institute, Government of India, and has served mainly in north and northeastern parts of India. After undergoing training in various sectors, he has been able to assist more than 250 entrepreneurs for market linkages. Presently, he is heading Champions Portal Division and connecting all SMEs with banks, state government departments, industrial associations, NGOs, testing laboratories, and central government departments. Today, in this session, he will be addressing on the MSME support for wooden handicraft sector. I request uh, Mr. Gopinathan to take over, please. Thank you, Madam, for a nice introduction to the audience. Uh, good morning to all the participants. Today's wonderful uh, program being organized by Institute of Food Science and Technology, Bangalore. Your your oh. video is off. Can you put on the video? It is there, no? Video is off. No, no, it's, video is on. We are not able to see you, sir. Yeah, we are not able to see you. So you need to unmute the video, sir. Can you see now? Not yet. Not yet, sir. I can see. What is the problem here? We can hear you, sir, properly, but we can't see your face. But I can see my PC. I am seeing this. But uh, all this video setting, logistic. Kindly switch on the camera, sir. So please go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Hello. Video is not on, but we can see, we can hear you, so you can go ahead. Okay, video here, I can see that. Okay, sir, very good morning. And uh, uh, so with respect to MSME, MSME Micro Small and Medium Enterprises, it's a 
uh, so what's uh, it be very big sector including all part possible uh, areas of uh, manufacturings maybe in wooden furniture or in a chemical or mechanical electrical any sector you think it comes under msme so msme being the most important sector in the indian economy and, and really contributing over 30% to the gdp and uh, uh, and giving the wide range of uh, i mean uh, so second after the uh, agriculture in terms of employment providing and uh, you know we have uh, the uh, handicrafts the present topic is on handicraft which is most important uh, uh, sector and product it's uh, got a very good potential for in export also right now uh, in domestic market the, the demand has to be created because the more and more uh, the uh, products especially in handicrafts which is having a huge potential growth in the, both in domestic as well as in the export as uh, my earlier speaker uh, spoke on the various the technology upgradations required and uh, we have uh, the uh, scheme the incubation schemes design cleaning schemes and also uh, just now our my colleague mr sinwasan mentioned we have a tie up with the indian institute of science under the design cleaning where this uh, particular sector can can take the benefit and uh, take the advantages of the technology from the indian institute of science and uh, i hope this uh, the chenpatna toy clusters or kinala clusters so and other all uh, handicrafts products wherever this manufacturing they can use this uh, particular the design clinic uh, sector i mean clinic uh, scheme under the msme schemes and of course the uh, to set up any industries in case of handicrafts or any related industries we have financial schemes which can be used for example uh, mudra scheme can be used for starting up the industries and uh, way up to 10 lakhs is available and even the uh, especially for stand up india where the women entrepreneurs and uh, the uh, scst candidates they can use the funding up from 10 lakhs to up to 1 crore they can use the benefit so why reason i am telling about the financial is the this is a in labor intensive sector where it requires a special kind of skill skill is required especially in wooden craft you need to take out a very good figure or carve out a very good figure you need the very good skill also and this skill has to be maintained for a long time because over a period of time we have seen that the numbers are coming down so in order to keep this skill constantly in a, in a good number it has to be transformed on skill training it has to be training uh, has to be there should be a provision for training the, the younger younger people who can opt for this this line and uh, whatever the whenever we we talk about the skill we have a skill india uh, scheme skill india that is under that scheme also we can uh, improve this the improve the development of these sectors and uh, we have uh train we are also get training with msme also doing a lot of training programs and we would like to have a tie up with the indian wood research institute where we can also have some train wood and i mean entrepreneurs who are going for opting these sectors and during the training programs we know a lot of other benefits like uh, the project report preparations identification of the product and the technology and the machineries all these things we taught i think with the support of this technical education institutions i think we can able to do a lot of other works especially in case of uh, the handicrafts and apart from the, the, the this schemes we also have a schemes under the cluster development programs where these group of industries if they come together uh, minimum with a minimum number of 20 units we can give fund uh, support up to 20 crores for the setting up of common facility centers and of course these handicrafts peoples the manufacturing units or micro i think most of them are micro enterprises if they come together for uh, uh, procurement of uh, advanced machineries and uh, we can provide a funding support up to 20 crores for setting up of common facility centers and with the i, I think i mean the uh, the board has taken uh, this uh, lead in uh, mobilizing the unit and then uh, putting it in the clusters so it's a good opportunity for uh, handicrafts make use of many msme clusters 
and of course we have a public procurement policy where all uh, public sectors are required to procure minimum 25 percent of their annual uh, requirements in this the the gift items through this uh, funding patterns you now this uh, you know, handicrafts will also become a wonderful area where they can become a part of the uh, central government or POCs in uh, as a vendor. So we have to see more uh, advanced technology in especially in this uh, uh, handicraft sectors. And with the support of IASC, I'm sure this sector will grow like anything. And with the MSME schemes, which also they can improve further. And uh, the role of uh, Indian, I mean, association, industry association like Lagodi Bharati also play a major role in bringing this sector to the upper class level. And uh, uh, we have a design clinic that is the only scheme that can help them a lot. And uh, funding support up to 40 lakhs will be provided, and that can be used. So I think I thanks the institute for organizing this wonderful uh, session. In order to improve in these sectors and become the notable, I mean, identifiable in the uh, world global market. And uh, of course, India is known for uh, handicrafts, and uh, we have since long beginning the history. We have seen the many and products which are um, uh, not been noticed till now, but till up to the uh, growth, we have seen a lot of product, new products coming into the market. And uh, wood plays an important role. Identification quality of wood especially becomes very important. For instance, raw material in terms of the uh, wood becomes very important. And I think this uh, uh, we can uh, take the institute assistance where you can identify the quality of the wood in order to help the these handicraft products. So I make India a great success, especially in the case of handicraft products. And I think uh, it's a good subject which we have chosen today. And many of them are, I mean, not aware of much the handicrafts uh, manufacturing systems. And it's a right time to know and then improve further. And uh, with the support of MSME and the IS, uh, IWST, and then the Bharati, I'm sure we can uh, develop these sectors very well to the global level. Thank you for giving me an opportunity, sir. Thank you. Can you hear me, sir? For sharing your thoughts. Yeah, if uh, we can have three, four page write up from you with the yes, specific sir. requirement for the handicraft sector that can we can share with the, all the participants also in our yeah. next Woodridge Good magazine. That will be good from you. Sir, we'll give, sir. Especially, especially main schemes which are required for the uh, this particular sector. Uh, yeah. One is the credit flow, one another is is for the design cleaning and the cluster development program. So these three areas where we have to focus for the development of these sectors. And these three schemes, we will uh, I'll try to share with the our institute through mail. I know the mail. So I mean, I have the mail with that, and then I will share the information on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Moving forward. Now, Dr. Anil Kumar Sethi will be uh, talking on wood quality parameters for wooden handicrafts. Uh, Dr. Anil Kumar Sethi joined ICFRA in 2003 and is presently working as scientist E at the Institute of Wood Science and Technology, Bangalore. He has a master's degree in wood science and technology from FRI deemed University, Dehradun, and a doctorate in wood processing from the University of Melbourne, Australia. He completed his postdoctoral studies at uh, Zec University of Life Sciences, Paraguay. His uh, specialization includes wood quality uh, assessment and value addition of plantation timbers. With this, I hand over to Dr. Sethi, please. Uh, thank you, madam. Uh, good morning, everybody. The topic of my, of my presentation is in quality parameters of wooden handicrafts. So this will be a little bit different as compared to the previous uh, topics because everybody talked about the importance of uh, available, non-availability of wood. So in that context, how the wood quality parameters can be taken into account to suggest alternative species which can support the handicraft sector. Wooden toys are manufactured by traditional artisans uh, throughout India using different wood species. However, the uh, availability of species plays a major role. And the turning or carving is highly skill-based. 
uh, which largely depends on the type of food as well as the type of uh, tools uh, utilized in preparing those products. Uh, wider, a wide range of timbers uh, uh, found application in uh, uh, handicraft, in the wood handicraft industries, and some of the prominence were given us here, totally for Miss right here, Tinktoria, uh, as well as uh, the sandalwood and uh, uh, rosewood. So this indicates that any species, uh, irrespective of the density, can be preferred for uh, handicrafts, depending on the uh, uh, type of handicraft to be prepared and depending on the tools that can be utilized. So uh, this suggests that there is a huge uh, scope for utilization of other species for handicraft purposes. Uh, but the industry is under threat from lack of uh, raw materials. This is one of the biggest challenges to make the industry sustainable. Uh, though India has a uh, rich diversity of species, in, and uh, we always uh, highlight that there are almost 1,600 uh, timber yielding species in the country. However, not all, all species are suitable for all applications, and the same applies for handicrafts also. Uh, so their industry is facing acute shortage of many of these species because of over exploitation and it may, it may not be confined only to handicraft. Hence it becomes important to study and suggest alternative species to increase the resource base so that uh, we can uh, reduce the pressure on the primary species as well as we can uh, uh, source material from a bigger resource base. So what are the parameters? Uh, if, we, if we see the uh, um, uh, the way handicrafts are prepared, the wood preferred by artisans is soft to moderately hard, has a fine texture and easy to carve into desired shapes, although the choice of wood depends on availability. The required size and shape of wood is cut, seasoned, attached to a lathe operated either manually or by motor and turned into, uh, smooth, uh, turned into a smoother product surface. Chisels are used to shape the revolving piece of wood and whatever flaws are produced that are sanded. So whatever points I've highlighted here, these are the quality parameters that can be uh, taken care of uh, during selecting a species. Uh, but when you talk about uh, uh, selecting a species, uh, the inherent uh, anatomy plays an important role. Although uh, the previous um, description, what I have highlighted the quality parameters, they're not uh, uh, directly cannot be linked uh, uh, into the anatomy. However, the anatomical structures impact all these parameters so that uh, while selecting a species, we should look into the anatomy while deriving uh, these uh, quality parameters. Uh, so broadly, the species have been classified into soft woods and hard woods. And all the uh, parameters what I have previously described, they are uh, affected by some of any I mean uh, either one or combination of all these factors. So in case of soft tools, we have trachytes, parenchyma, resin canals, and vessels. And sorry, rays. Uh, but in case of hard tools, we have vessels and fibers, parenchyma, rays, and gum canals. So among these uh, two groups of uh, wood, uh, because in India we always uh, uh, we are only um, uh, capable of sourcing hard woods because uh, uh, soft tools are in short supply. So as far as hard is concerned, the vessels and fibers, these are the most, and ray cells, these are the most important parameter, anatomical parameters that affect the wood quality uh, as far as handicrafts are concerned. So the bottom picture shows how their properties varies. Although the hardwood contains vessels, fibers, and uh, ray cells, uh, they, uh, as they affect the uh, wood quality parameters, uh, these parameters also vary uh, between the species. So just to highlight that, uh, this gives the anatomy of uh, four species. Uh, the first one is Acacia nilotica, bubble, and this is Semul. And the second, uh, third and fourth photographs, the right are Adina cordifolia and Anodiosa latifolia. So they have taken with the same resolution, uh, but it can be seen that the vessels, I mean, the open spaces are quite bigger in first two spaces, uh, while they are very small in the second and third spaces. So this indicates that uh, the anatomical parameters, uh, based, sorry, based on this vessel size, the structure of the wood, the, the texture of the wood can be different. While the first two species belongs to a coarse texture wood, the second and th uh, third species they can go, they can be grouped into a fine textured wood. Uh, it's it's not only the vessel parameters. Even sometimes the fiber characteristics as well as rate characteristics also affect the properties. Uh, in making the wood, either it is a fine textured or medium fine or coarse textured wood. So all these variations in wood anatomy leads to wood with a different structure. And uh, when the structure changes, of course, the uh, properties also gets affected. Uh, so the most of the physical parameters that are relevant for uh, handicraft sector as weight, or we always express as density, then texture, hardness, 
grain, shrinkage and swelling, as well as moisture content. So the uh, Although the density, uh, the, there is a huge, uh, there is a classification of uh, wood, uh, wood, sample, wood based on the density, and we classify them light to very light and moderately heavy and heavy to very heavy. However, not necessarily that each party, uh, any one group of species is suitable for handicrafts. Uh, as I told in the beginning, uh, um, depending on the product, different species can be uh, utilized. For instance, uh, rose wood, even red sand, or fine saplicus having a density of uh, 1.1 or 1.2. Uh, I mean, thousand kg per cubic meter. Finds application in handicrafts when you uh, talk about some handicrafts in Tirupati areas. At the same time, even there are species like uh, uh, which having a density of 500. They also find application uh, in handicrafts uh, in Karnataka, particularly right here in Turiya with a lesser density. So density, though, though it is a uh, criteria for classification of timber, but sometimes when uh, handicrafts are preferred. The different density can be uh, utilized for preparing handicrafts depending on the product as well as uh, um, availability. So, and the hardness also plays an important role because uh, the, um, it, it affects the ease of working. Uh, sometimes the wood is very hard, that can be a deterrent for the carpenters to uh, go for that species because uh, it can blunt the tools. Uh, at the same time, you know, the energy consumption during, if it is a more, um, mechanized, uh, tool, if mechanized tools are uh, used, then this can add to um, more energy uh, uh, use. So that can, be, uh, that can make the species um, uh, activity more energy intensive. Uh, the texture is nothing but the uh, how we feel from the surface of a wood when you put our finger. But uh, the feel, as I mentioned in the previous slides, uh, the feel depends on the texture, particularly the size distribution and proportion of various elements. How these uh, cells, are, what is the proportion of each element and how, what are their size and distribution, they affect the feel. Uh, in hardwood, it is primarily related to the size and frequency of the vessels and the size of uh, and the size and distribution of the raised cells. Uh, however, in coniferous woods, it largely depends on the trackage. Uh, so, based on the texture, uh, wood have been classified into fine textured, medium coarse textured, and coarse, te coarse textured wood. And for handicraft, mostly fine texture and to some extent medium coarse texture can be utilized. But for core, uh, but very coarse texture may, may not be very ideal for uh, handicrafts, wooden handicrafts. So the next important character is grain. It is nothing but the, the direction of alignment of various cell elements in the wood, how they are aligned with respect to the vertical axis of the tree, or when you talk a small uh, plank for carving. So with respect to the axis, how the grains, uh, the cells are aligned. Depending on the actual alignment of the wood elements, the grain may be straight, spiral, interlocked, and wavy or irregular. And they can affect the surface quality while uh, turning or while making a woodworking uh, operation. The nature of grain is of great importance in timber utilization as it affects not only the strength but also the woodworking qualities as well as the drying behaviors because some of the timber, if the grains are not straight, in the first in instance when you dry the timber uh, before carving, uh, there can be a lot of deformation and that can add to loss of uh, material. The moisture content is a very, very important parameter as far as wood is concerned and uh, and normally, the moisture content in a standing tree can range from 30 to 300 uh, percent. But when you utilize the wood for some product, we need a moisture content uh, which is prevailing in our atmosphere, the, uh, equivalent to our prevailing moisture content of the atmosphere, which is around 10 to 12 percent. So we have to bring down the moisture content to that level. Otherwise, uh, uh, in the process, if, if it is not properly uh, uh, dried uh, with a control manner, and then it can lead to uh, excessive shrinkage and uh, uh, dimensional instability, so which can create uh, failure in the retention of the shape of the product. So the products can crack as well as, you know, they can be deformed if the moisture content is not regulated. Hence, seasoning forms a very important criteria, I mean, a step in the processing wood for uh, handicraft products because precision is very, precision as well as retention of shape, they are very, very important character as far as uh, handicraft products are concerned. Otherwise, the, if the shape deforms, the utility also goes down and the value also falls. Uh, these are of the, whatever characters I told, these are basically the wood quality parameter. I mean, uh, wood quality parameters uh, in, uh, in terms of the physical properties. Um, but in addition to those parameters, we also look into the woodworking qualities because when we talk about selecting a species for handicrafts or for any purpose, then we should know how they behave. So 
not um, like this when we talk about structural application we always look into the uh, make a physical and mechanical properties but when you talk about wood um, handicrafts uh, not mechanical properties uh, are that important as compared to wood quality parameters so there are uh, six parameters that has been uh, recommended uh, to evaluate before suggesting a species. Uh, they are planing, sanding, shaping, boring, mortising and toning. Even in handicraft, not necessarily all the para, I mean, processing steps are important. For instance, when you talk about, when we talk about uh, uh, ternary products, so the turning and uh, shaping, uh, for, as well as sanding forms uh, the important criteria as compared to planing, because we don't go for planing in ternary products. However, when you talk about carving, you know, in the rectangular blocks, so in the beginning, uh, the surface needs to be planed. So they are planning from, uh, from the uh, important I mean, steps. So depending on the um, uh, requirement of the uh, product, uh, uh, different weightages can be given to all these uh, woodworking operations. And based on that, we can evaluate the performance. So there is an Indian standard that suggests how to go, uh, assess the woodworking qualities because if, the, if there is not a, a standard procedure, then uh, describing a species uh, for suitability can be subjective. Uh, so in order to rule out those uh, differences, uh, BIS has uh, specified certain uh, criteria how to assess the working qualities of any particular species and based on that working quality, how to recommend them for different end applications. So uh, uh, when, you talk, when we assess the woodworking qualities, first we grade the material based on uh, defects. So there are uh, each species or uh, I mean, every species is subjected to all these uh, six operations what I have described earlier. And based on the number of defects, the samples were graded and uh, on the total number of defects and the percentage of samples in each grade is also calculated. That is the first step. Then we go for rating factors. Uh, for rating, uh, uh, planning and sanding was given uh, for that purpose. The percentage of grade um, grade one specimens are taken into account. For shaping and boring, both uh, grade one and grade two samples are taken. And for mortising and turning, we take both grade one, grade two, and grade three specimens. So based on all these rating factors, then adjustment factors are derived at the laboratory, or it can be taken from the published literature. Uh, even the similar is done for teak also. And uh, then uh, we give weightage value um, depending on the mode, uh, uh, depending on the operation. Uh, for instance, uh, sanding is the prime, uh, most important operation in almost all uh, woodworking processes. That's why sanding is given a weightage of five, and boring and turning is given uh, importance of two and three. But um, this can depend also the end application. Suppose you are going for turning, uh, uh, turning purposes, then turning can have more weightage. Uh, then, uh, based on all these parameters, we calculate the composite rating factor. And uh, along with composite rating factor, we also calculate the ease of uh, each factor. That means uh, uh, how um, the process, how much energy that process requires. Uh, it, uh, mostly it is the electrical energy. Then everything is taken into account and uh, wood, uh, woodworking quality of a particular species is expressed and with respect to teak. And that we call it as uh, working quality index. So based on the working quality index, the species is recommended, uh, whether it is superior, I mean, uh, at par with teak or better than teak. Uh, so uh, I'll just give an example. Uh, this was published by Gupta et al. from FRI. Uh, for example, in Melia Dubia. So there are different operations have been given a uh, rating factor. Although the uh, um, some of the uh, machining operations like planing and uh, shaping is far better as compared to teak, but uh, when you talk about boring and turning, uh, they are very, very inferior. Uh, so in that case, we can suggest that although Melia Dubia can be utilized for you know, uh, furnitures and other purposes, but when you talk about ternary items, they may not perform well because their properties in boring uh, as well as uh, a turning is pretty poor. Uh, so this, this is an indication how a species is worked out when we recommend them for a um, uh, handicraft species, handicap purposes. So uh, in the similar fashion, a lot of species have been worked out both at FRI as well as at IWST. Uh, some of them are Acacia auriculoformis, Mesopsis semini. So uh, the, all the parameters like turning, boring, planing, sanding, carving, ease of operation, and policing also has been taken into account. So based on these parameters, uh, how they perform under each operations have been uh, quantified. And uh, uh, the, some of the species, uh, secondary species that has been recommended for handicrafts are like Eucalyptus tariticonis, uh, Eucalyptus camelodonensis, Eucalyptus citrodera, the Gyrocarpus jacquini, Mesopsis emini, 
then Swetenia mahogany, Odina codifolia, as a director indica, Tuna ciliata, Simaruba glauca, Acacia mangium and Ticumbula andulata. So these are some of the species that have been worked out in our institute and uh, the uh, species have been recommended. And when we assess the, um, when you report any species for handicraft based on the uh, methodology given in IS, uh, that is one part of the story. We also take into account the perception of uh, artisans because they are the people uh, who can really um, uh, make a difference in uh, accepting the species. So uh, wh while doing the studies, we also take the feedback from the artisans and we take into account their perception while recommending the species for uh, end applications. So th these are the so, so some of the products of Acacia mangium that has been carved uh, as well as uh, turn. These are, then uh, some of the products from eucalyptus species, uh, eucalyptus turrets, these are from copies as well as non copies plant, uh, plantations. The Stecomela andulata, we call it the Marua teak. Then Saimaruba glauca, it's very light timber, but still um, uh, it uh, uh, reasonably good products can be prepared using Saimaruba glauca. And so, in, uh, to conclude, I'll again highlight that increasing the resource base by suggesting suitable, suitable alternatives to traditional species not only make the handicraft industry sustainable, but also add to the income of the farmers. Hence, uh, it is necessary that we should work out more species and uh, we should also involve the artisans and uh, to take them into confidence uh, while suggesting a sp a species for handicraft. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. After uh, quality parameters, let's move forward uh, for the topic of seasoning and preservation of timber for uh, wood uh, handicrafts. So first we'll be talking on the seasoning aspect. Uh, Mr. Ritesh Kumar D. Ram joined ICFRE in 2003. He's presently working as Scientist F in the Institute of Wood Science and Technology, Bangalore. Uh, he has worked extensively in different areas of wood energy and wood polymer composites and also on the biomass briquetting, production and characterization of charcoal and wood gasification. Uh, his work includes understanding the fuel wood characteristics of various woody and non-woody biomasses including forest weeds, a novel extraction method to obtain higher oil yield in significantly less extraction time has been developed by him and also a novel veneer, uh, wood veneer and natural fiber reinforced thermoplastic based hybrid composite panel product having the potential to replace LVL panels or conventional plywood has also been developed by him. With this brief, I hand over to Dr. Ritesh to speak on the topic of timber seasoning for wood handicrafts. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, to everyone, one and all. So uh, let us discuss a little bit about seasoning. As the previous speakers have said that seasoning is one of the very important criteria when we are dealing with the wood because uh, it is not only, it not only retains the shape but also helps in so many other uh, uh, woodworking, uh, ease of woodworking and uh, uh, giving the preservative treatment, all those factors, actually they are dependent upon the how we are drying the wood. So seasoning of wood actually refers to the reducing the moisture content uh, prior to its wood use. And what are the importance of drying? It, uh, the first very most, very most important uh, factor is that it maintains the equilibrium moisture content with the prevailing atmospheric condition. It is very important that the wood should be dried uh, and retained at the equilibrium moisture content where it is going to be used. And also there are different defects. If the wood is not dried properly and uh, we are manufacturing the product out of it, there are chances that uh, different defects may arise. And therefore in order to control those defects, it is important to dry the wood. It is also required uh, for retention of shapes and size in the articles and minimizing the movement in the art, movement in the products. Uh, it also protects the timber from fungal decay, stains and other uh, infesting wood insects. Insects, mm, wood, when it absorbs the moisture, it uh, creates the favorable conditions for the microorganisms and the insects so that they can utilize this 
uh, cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin, which is present inside the wood along with the starch as their food material. And then uh, there, there are chances that uh, the, uh, the product also, which is not unseasoned or not properly seasoned, may be degraded because of this uh, lack of seasoning. And then seasoned timber is, of course, easy to transport. It is stronger and, uh, than the grinder timber. And it also uh, receives quite a bit of preservative treatment when it is um, uh, proper retention of the preservatives uh, happens when the seasoned timbers are used. And the woodworking and the finishing qualities um, are better in the seasoned timber. So uh, just uh, uh, these are the different zones. Uh, where which has been uh, studied and uh, created according to the uh, relative humidity percentage and then the moisture content, how much the moisture content should be retained and how much the moisture content should be kept. Uh, the India has been divided into four different zones. And the zone one has the relative humidity, which has the relative humidity less than uh, 40%. Zone 2, the relative humidity, which is between 40% uh, to 50%. Zone 3, uh, 50% to 67% and zone 4, uh, which is the relative where the relative humidity is more than 67%. So we can see uh, that most of the uh, zone, which is le less than, like it is in the drier area, like uh, Jodhpur, Gujarat, Jaipur, all these other drier regions. And uh, zone 3 and 4 are the, four are the northeastern part of our country and the middle one is the uh, zone 2 where the relative humidity is between 40 to 50 <clears> percent. <throat> what are the important parameters that are required for drying? These are the important factors which are responsible for drying like relative humidity, temperature and air circulation. Like we dry any other thing, the wood drying also is impacted uh, by these three parameters largely. Uh, apart from other uh, factors like uh, grain direction and uh, uh, and the anatomy of the wood. So if the relative humidity is uh, less, the drying is faster, keeping the temperature constant. And if the temperature is higher, keeping the relative humidity constant, the diffusion of water from the wood surface will be higher. Similarly, the air circulation also impacts uh, the drying of the wood, higher the air circulation, keeping the temperature and relative humidity constant. With the higher circulation of the wood, uh, the, uh, the drying of the wood also enhanced. These are some other important factors which impact the drying rate, like species, uh, initial moisture content, and the grain direction. So not all the species, they dry uh, quickly or they dry very easily. There are some refractory uh, species, like sal, which has the interlocked grain and, uh, and uh, which dry which from which the moisture is um, removed but it can be removed slowly it doesn't dry as quickly as other species like mango uh, or uh, semel where are some moderately refractory species are there which are moderate uh, which give moderate response to the drying factors uh, there are some prerequisites uh, for before we dry or season our timber so what are these prerequisites? So what are the logs when we saw a log or when we uh, when we harvest the log from the forest? As early as possible, the log should be end protected. Uh, the end protection is mostly done by providing bituminous paints. And then the log should be stored properly. Uh, the log should be protected against deterioration. And these logs, because they are prone to end splitting, if the moisture, if we allow the uh, logs to um, logs to remain in the open condition for a long period of time or exposed to the temperature, it is possible that the moisture will come out from the end. And uh, uh, this abrupt uh, escape of the moisture from the end may cause the end splitting, uh, causing the damage to the uh, timber and the loss of the timber. Therefore, um, for proper protection and uh, uh, these logs should be end protected. Uh, so, other methods are continuous spraying of the water in the log, which inhibits the stain and the fungal de um, uh, decay organisms, uh, staining organisms, and also reduce the splitting. It also uh, prevents the surface checking and the warping. Uh, 
but it is not that effective against the bacterial attack because if the water is not continuously changed, the bacterial attack may happen and cause some kind of uh, damage to the wood. Uh, uh, the cold and the fresh water are more effective. Uh, then the storage of the water in the pond. So when we are storing the uh, storing the water in the pond, it is very very important that uh, that the water should be replaced uh, once uh, or once in two or three weeks. Uh, it uh, it prevents uh, the it prevents uh, the wood from uh, certain uh, uh, microorganisms. And then when the water saturated conditions are there. Uh, the it becomes very difficult for the decaying organisms like fungi to grow because in water saturated condition they the amount of the amount of air which which presents in the uh, the wood actually goes down and then the fungal growth also reduces it prevents sand splitting surface checking warping uh, this water storage uh, water storage was actually earlier uh, was a part of uh, our tradition when they used to harvest the timber in the in the forest and then they used to supply this timber using the rivers so what happens when the logs were submerged for a longer period of time uh, in the water so uh, they get water saturated uh, therefore uh, most of the soluble sugars uh, which actually attracts the insects actually they get drained out and further actually uh, because of this water saturated conditions uh, the growth of this fungal decay organisms and the insect attack also were prevented. Further, this uh, as they are in the saturated condition only, the end splitting, surface cracking, cracking, and other defects arising in the logs were prevented. End coating is, as I told, end coating prevents the end splitting. It retards the fungal strain, prevents the rapid uh, drying through the ends, and therefore it checks the. Uh, therefore, it checks the the drying, uh, uh, rapid drying of the wood and the defects arising because of that. And there are different uh, things that we can use for this like end coats, bituminous paint, thick tar. All these things are uh, materials we can use for end coating. Then protection of the green lumber from the fungal stain. It can be done when the temperature is kept between 100 uh, 10 to 49 degrees centigrade, the moisture is more than 40 percent, relative humidity is higher than 90 percent. Presence of sugar uh, in the sap should be reduced. <clears throat> These are the some of the prerequisite that we can uh, try. So uh, then once the logs are harvested and when we have stored the log properly, uh, then comes the uh, pre-shorting. So uh, while uh, before seasoning uh, uh, the before drying the wood properly or before seasoning the wood properly, it is important that we short the wood because uh, there are uh, different uh, quality, uh, there are different anatomical characteristics and there are different uh, structural characteristics which uh, which the hardwood and the softwood, uh, softwood, uh, softwood uh, boards they are different. And therefore, the drying rate and the drying behavior also with the temperature, air, and relative humidity differs in uh, in the hardwood and the softwood species. Therefore, uh, depending upon the type of the wood, uh, uh, type of the species from where the planks have been uh, planks have been obtained, and the species type, like if it is uh, if they are, uh, it is a moderately refractory species. So all the moderately refractory species of the similar thickness. Uh, can be mixed together and they can be dried together. Uh, the hardwood, uh, the hardwood can be dried together, uh, having the same thickness and the refractory nature or the moderately refractory nature, keeping all these things in mind. So pre-shorting is very very important. Uh, then comes the stacking. So stacking of the timber uh, is um, uh, uh, the stacking of the timber is also very important. Uh, before uh, drying or before keeping the uh, planks inside the inside the kiln or air drying it for reducing its moisture content. Uh, uh, the faultless stacking of the timber is a prerequisite. Uh, the boards which are up to 40 mm thickness should always be stacked board to board. Boards which are above 40, 40 mm thickness should always be stacked with the spacing. The stickers must be plated placed exactly one above the other and the spacing between them should be 30 to 50 centimeters. The hardwood side should always be kept upward 
and the top loading is the must for prevention of uh, dashing. The stack width sh uh, should not exceed uh, six inch, six feet in the uh, length or two meters. These are the some uh, some stacking uh, uh, pictures that I, that we can see here. That all the stickers are placed in a uniform way, and then, then the planks are all uh, stacked properly, one above the other. Therefore, the distribution of the weight and the uh, distribution of the weight is proper. Therefore, any deformation which arises in one plank can be minimized by the weight of the adjacent planes above it, and the air circulation also is proper. So, uh, uh, if it is a pole, then in the poles we can do the stacking like this. If the thicker, thicker size samples are there, then the stacking can be uh, different. Uh, of course, when we are uh, storing the timber uh, and when we are uh, keeping the stack before uh, putting it inside the kiln, the stacking must be done above the raised, in the raised platform. Uh, it is always better that uh, there should be proper drainage. Uh, it should be properly, uh, uh, it should be properly uh, clean and dry place so that the fungal and the other microbial organism should not uh, inhibit there. Uh, and prevention of the timber from the moisture is very very important. So, uh, so these are some of the factors. So let us see how the, uh, when we are discussing about, how the moisture actually is held within the wood. So when we are talking in the, in the wood, there are two different kinds of water which is there inside the wood. One is the free water and another one is the bound water. So when the free water which is which is actually present in the spaces, in the cell spaces or uh, uh, in the vessels, uh, this free water um, uh, when it is removed from the wood, actually there is no shrinkage or swelling it occurs. But the water which is bound with the cell and when that water actually goes uh, out of the wood, most of the shrinkage and swelling it occurs because when the cell dries, the cell shrinks and <clears throat> with the shrinkage of the cell, the uh, the uh, the shrinkage and the swelling occurs in the wood. So let us see um, uh, what happens. Uh, uh, what is the free water? As soon as the timber is cut, the wood starts to lose water. The initial reduction of the moisture content is the result of the free loss of water. Uh, the loss of the free water will occur relatively quick in the small cross-section timber, even if the timber is exposed to the rain. However, in large cross section, it can take many decades for all the free water to be lost. And when, as I told, when the free water which goes from the uh, void or the vessels or the cells actually do not uh, make any difference or do not cause shrinkage and swelling in the wood. But once the all the free water is gone and once, uh, once the uh, water which is um, present in the cell uh, remains, that is called the fiber saturation point. Below this fiber saturation point only, actually when we dry the timber, a lot of energy is required uh, to remove this uh, moisture from the uh, moisture from the wood, which is uh, below the fiber saturation point. And once the fiber saturation point is, uh, we dry the wood below the fiber saturation point, then only the uh, then only the shrinkage and the other stresses develop. So it is important to keep all these things in mind before uh, drying. So, uh, what are the principles of drying? As I told, uh, the moisture gradient uh, is the guiding factor. So, uh, let us see what happens when we have just initially cut the wood, when the wood has been uh, harvested and there is a 100% moisture content in the wood. So, what happens? Uh, the moisture is equally distributed uh, throughout the wood samples. So, we can divide the wood into three different parts, the surface core and the, there are two surfaces and one core, uh, core which is present. So, in the initial stage, the surface uh, becomes below the FSP and the core above the FSP. Uh, FSP. What it uh, signifies that when the moisture actually, uh, when we are drying the uh, drying the wood, if the surface become very dry, if initially if we are if we are drying the timber and if we have raised the temperature or the relative humidity is very very less, the surface will dry and it will dry below the FSP, whereas the core will remain. 
the moisture will be still present in the core. So, uh, when, once the surface is dry, the surface will tend to shrink. Whereas the core will remain uh, with the saturated moisture content, it will prevent the surface from shrinkage. So, when there are two different kinds of pools which are uh, which are acting in the same same wood, so what will happen? The one the surface layer will try to shrink, and the core layer will prevent it. There there are chances that uh, kind of a case hardening or surface cracking may occur. So, uh, what is the remedy? The remedy is that initially we should try not to dry the timber very very fast. If we are trying to dry the timber very fast, the chances are there that our surface may become dry and the gradient which actually which uh, which is required to pull the water from the core to the surface and from surface then it goes out. Actually it may break. So uh, it is always uh, recommended that the surface should uh, the surface moisture should retain and the surface moisture should surface should lose the moisture uh, slowly and it can, this can be done when the temperature can be kept low and when we reduce the relative humidity slowly keeping the temperature constant and then when the surface dries slowly and slowly the moisture moves from core to the surface and then core dries also along with the surface that is the best way of drying the timber. So uh, we should not push the timber for a faster drying otherwise there are chances that the surface cracking and the case hardening may happen. In the second stage or the intermediate stage sometimes what happens when uh, in the initial stage the equilibrium moisture content can be safely reduced to accelerate the drying uh, with racing uh, with without race of surface cracking. So in the second stage what happens when the uh, when now all the moisture when it goes from the core to the surface here the opposite situation happens here the core has dried below the FSP whereas the surface has become more in the moisture uh, so the moisture level in the surface has has become higher. So the core is in the tension and the surface in the compression. So again there are chances that a certain kind of a set or certain kind of a deformity may occur uh, if if uh, if we do not uh, take care in this stage also and uh, which may result in uh, the seasoning related defect. So at this time also the relative humidity we should keep uh, uh, low whereas we can slightly raise the temperature so, so, so that the surface also should lose the moisture and the gradient between the core and the surface should not be uh, uh, loose. And once the surface and the core is dried and all the moisture has come to the surface then at that stage which is the third stage of the drying we can easily raise the temperature uh, and lowering the relative humidity and then the seasoning can always be uh, seasoning can be proper. So here uh, uh, what is the kiln sample uh, that actually uh, when we are dealing with the uh, kiln drying the kiln samples are uh, very very important because these are the samples which are the uh, which are kept in the uh, seasoning kiln so that uh, it is not possible for us that always we can take out all the samples and then measure that what is the changes in this uh, sample so the kiln samples are chosen from the thickest uh, there are some uh, parameters on which the kiln samples are selected so kill samples are chosen from the thickest and the wettest and the slowest drying stock in the kill charges. In general, the hardwood samples are preferred over the sapwood samples. So uh, these are the some of the conditions which we um, uh, desire in the kill samples. Uh, uh, so as I told, uh, uh, these are the kill samples and when we take out these kill samples, not only we can see the moisture content, how much is the moisture reducing, but we can also see how they are behaving. So if we see the above diagram, we can see that uh, uh, there are three different kinds of situations here <clears throat> in which in one the prong is uh, the prong is coming inside, in one the prong is going outside. So, uh, so what does this show? Actually this shows that there is an unequal distribution of the moisture in the wood. And when there is an unequal distribution of the moisture and while seeing these prongs, we can always decide what remedy should be given. Sometimes if the prongs are going outside, it means the surface is dry and the core is wet. So at that time what we can do if, um, if we provide, if we, if we increase the relative humidity, if we spray certain, some uh, moisture content keeping the temperature low. So what we can do, we can relax the surface and also the surface will once again relax and the, we can straighten the prong. So these are, uh, these are the uh, kill samples and the moisture distribution which is required for uh, uh, preventing the case hardening and other deformities. 
there are some drying defects uh, like if we dry too rapidly there are chances that the surface checks and checks internal checks uh, like honeycombing splits and crackings may happen if we are drying too slowly there are chances that the fungal stain mold and other uh, other stains may happen because of chemical uh, chemical leaching out warping may also occur and if we have not stacked properly if the poor stacking is there then there are chances that the warping may happen especially the boying and uneven drying may happen then there are operational errors then there are uh, defects such as uh, uh, knots which are present there are two different kinds of knots like live knot and the dead knot so th these are the uh, these are the defects which may arise uh, there are some natural defects and the, there are some seasoning related defects which are there uh, which can be prevented when we are properly drying the timber. So we can see here the timber was not dried properly and therefore the, uh, the uh, joint when, when the shrinkage happened the joint came out. This is the live knot, whereas this is the dead knot. When the dead knot actually shrinks, the dead knot may come out. <clears throat> Sometimes what happens is the timber is not dried properly and in the summer season, when the movement happens, we can see a lot of gaps between the tables and the joints become open. So, and uh, uh, these are certain kinds of uh, another defects which may arise when the uh, timbers are, when the seasoning is not properly done, like boying, cupping, uh, twisting of timber, splitting, shakes, uh, checks and all this actually this may happen in the timber also and if it is not dried properly it is possible that this may happen in your product also uh, so uh, there are loss of actually uh, uh, timber as well as loss of product we can see the deformities how uh, how uh, how the deformities happens if it is not dried properly So there are two different kinds of drying. One is kiln drying and another one is uh, air drying. I'll just rush. So what is air seasoning? Air seasoning is nothing but when we are drying uh, in the open air where the, uh, where the moisture is removed with the help of the heat which is coming from the sun, the air which is in the atmosphere and the relative humidity around us. So uh, in this kind of a drying, the <clears throat> the basic principles are same. So uh, we have to stack the timber and once the timbers are stacked uh, properly, the air can be circulated around uh, through the stack, which is naturally done. Um, in some cases, we put the weight over the top of the stacks to prevent the warping. Um, and often the ends are uh, painted uh, for that, uh, for the slow removal of moisture from the end grains to prevent the end checking, the timber should be stacked well away from the trees and the buildings, the air seasoning site uh, should be well drained site and uh, with the concrete and the level ground, the weeds and the other small plant, plant uh, should be cleared from that uh, site. Uh, it is, if possible, we can always uh, do the air seasoning in the shed condition uh, with strong tropical sun uh, where the strong tropical sun is there because if uh, it is directly exposed to the sun, uh, again, the deformity may happen. Then extreme seasonal fluctuation can be prevented like uh, rain and other things and where si sizable quantity of the timber has to be air seasoned regularly. So air seasoning sheds are recommended in uh, these areas. Then the air seasoning, actually the, uh, the drawback of air seasoning is that we do not have any control over the, uh, the natural conditions, the natural condition which comes from the sun, the heat from the sun. The air which is uh, circulated, uh, the speed of the air or the relative humidity, we do not have control over anything. So if we do not have the kiln, still uh, uh, the air seasoning takes somewhere around three months uh, of time, uh, three to uh, four months of time for properly drying a timber before uh, below FSP or the required equilibrium moisture content. But this can be enhanced if we, uh, if we do a forced air drying. So forced air drying is nothing. <coughs> And nothing uh, but in, before the stack if we are providing certain kind of a uh, fan if we are keeping a fan then we can uh, artificially we can uh, provide uh, a fast movement of air through the stacks uh, 
uh, if we are keeping a kind of a, uh, a heater before the fan, then also we can increase the temperature of the air which is circulated uh, through the uh, uh, th circulated through the stack. And that can also enhance. So uh, forced air drying is one method, but this forced air drying, uh, air drying and forced air drying in combination of the kiln drying. Uh, is basically used in most of the kilns, uh, most of the industries. So what is a kiln drying? So kiln drying is nothing but uh, once we have uh, the control over uh, the, uh, as in the air drying, we do not have any control over the source of heating. Uh, we do not know when the clouds will come and the rain will occur. We do not have control over the wind speed. But once we have the control over all this, uh, uh, the, uh, the factors which are responsible for drying of the timber, uh, like uh, the source of heating, uh, generation of wind, wind, or the air inside the kiln, or the relative humidity, maintaining the relative humidity inside the kiln, then we can easily maintain, uh, uh, then where we can control all these factors, that is actually inside a room, uh, is nothing but the uh, kiln drying. So uh, in India, basically, uh, the steam heated kiln is, uh, is the most prevalent and the largely used kiln. This is uh, the steam example of a steam heated kiln, and here, uh, as I told, that uh, the uh, there is a fan which is provided once the timber is stacked. These are all insulated from outside. Uh, the heat cannot go from once the heat is generated. That cannot be go outside unless we desire it, and the <clears throat> fresh air ducts are provided. So once the uh, once the timber is stacked. The heating sources, uh, the heating coils are there, uh, as well as uh, the heating pipes, the steam uh, passing through the pipe also generates the, uh, generates the kind of a uh, kind of uh, heat within the uh, within the chamber, uh, which uh, which allows the diffusion of moisture from the uh, from the uh, kill, and the uh, pedestal fan, which is actually two direction uh, two directional fan, which is there, it it is a reversible fan. Uh, which allows the wind to flow in two different directions, and you can uh, we can maintain uh, like for 24 hours the air circulation is in one direction, then another 24 or 48 hours the air circulation in another direction, so so that the both the side uh, of the uh, both the sides of the timber may properly be dried, and once the relative humidity is uh, generated, the moisture comes out, the relative humidity increases, so in order to reduce the relative humidity, uh, the exhausts uh, or the chimneys are provided. When the once the exhausts are open, the 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 humid air goes out, and then the fresh air ducts are there, which allows us to uh, which allows us to uh, 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 take inside uh, the fresh air, and again the relative humidity we can control. So depending upon the different kinds of heating system and different kind of relative comp uh, uh, relative humidity controlling system, the uh, here in electrical heated kiln instead of the steam pipe, uh, we have the electrical coils. Which are there for uh, generating the heat within the uh, within the kiln, and this is the conventional side-mounted fan, uh, side-mounted conventional kiln, uh, where the fan is in the side. We have also dehumidifier kiln, uh, where uh, the dehumidification takes place, and again, the hot air, which is dehumidified air, is again circulated inside. And with this uh, dehumidified air, once the moisture is which is generated again goes back to the same air and which gets saturated and again it is dehumidified and again it is circulated back inside the chamber. Mm, there it, uh, it occurs like that. This is the solar heated kiln. So there are different ways by which the uh, seasoning can be done. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, as mentioned earlier, after seasoning, we'll now move towards the preservation of wooden handicrafts by Mrs. Vani. Uh, Mrs. Vani joined Institute of Wood Science and Technology way back in 1991. She is presently working as assistant chief technical officer and has since been working in the field of wood preservation and seasoning. She has expertise in wood seasoning and preservation, particularly preservation techniques choice of preservatives, application of preservatives for different uses, retention and absorb, uh, absorption of preservatives in wood. Her research is mainly focused on finding suitable eco-friendly plant-based uh, uh, plant wood preservatives. And also having worked on uh, bamboo preservation under green condition, 
she plans to treat bamboo with lesser toxic uh, preservatives. Now I hand over to Mrs. Vani, please. Good afternoon, all. Today's topic is preservative treatment for handicraft articles. So, with the previous uh, uh, experts have given a good introduction, no need to give uh, more on introduction part. And why wood is used for handicraft is it is easily worked out with tools and uh, machines, and it is resistant to mild chemicals and it is, does not corrode easily. So, this is uh, one of the best part of wood. So, for handicrafts, uh, they have given good introduction. I will not go into details. So, uh, the manufacturing stage of the any wooden handicraft requires uh, uh, procuring, sell, procuring and selection of wood, proper wood, cutting the wood to proper desired shape or size, seasoning of wood, and then preservation of wood, and after that, carving the articles and applying the required coatings and colors and proper storage. These are all the uh, steps to be followed when you are doing the handicraft articles. So what are the agents of deterioration? Wood being a biological material, it is liable to deteriorate by fungal organism, by biological organisms like termites, fungi, beetles, ants, borers, and many other insects in terrestrial conditions. Such a degradation results in the loss of strength and wood, uh, strength in wooden articles. So the biological factors are mainly fungi, termites, and borers. So why need for the protection of wood is natural durability is the inherent ability of timber to resist decay and other destructive organisms. In all the species of timber, the sap wood is non-durable and needs preservation treatment. Non-durable non species, when suitably treated, would give adequate life under service conditions. So wood preservation is the art of preserving timber against the agencies of deterioration. So if you take the cross-section of wood in general, in general so sap wood is light colored outer surface it is and it is porous and it uh, decays quickly and takes the preservative easily and hardwood of all the species is almost dark in color forming its support more durable than the sap wood and often decay resistant and difficult to treat but in fast growing and uh, this thing uh, plantation uh, species sap wood is more compared to hardwood so we had to give a preservative treatment for all plantation and uh, fast growing treatments for uh, foods. Durability of timber. So timbers are classified under different durability class based on the hardwood durability. These are as follows. If its um, life is more than 120, 120 months and uh, it is called as durable class one durable wood. So class two is if its life is more than 60 months and less than 120 months. Example is Eucalyptus, Terminalia species, and Babul. And the class 3 is less than 60 months. And for example, it is rubber wood and mango. So treatability. Durability we have seen. So based on the durability and treatability, we have to do the treatment methods. We have to choose the treatment methods and suitable preservatives. Treatability of wood is A to C, A to E, it is classified. Hardwood, it is easily treatable from very difficult to treat. It is, class, it is classified A, B, C, D, E group. We had to choose which, which to which uh, if the, our species to which class it belongs. That we had to see. If it is easily treatable, so A, B, C, D, E we had to decide. And species used in the handicrafts they have mentioned in the experts. So no need to go on this. So wood preservation techniques enable us to extend the lifespan of wood almost indefinitely depending on the preservative and the method used. The efficacy of the preservative treatment depends upon the correct choice of the preservative chemical and the treatment method, which ensures that required absorption and penetration of the preservative is possible. And what is the, there are different types of preservatives, uh, maybe mainly oil type, organic solvent type, water soluble, and the uh, this thing water, that is fixed water soluble, non-fixed water soluble. But for our handicrafts, we should concentrate on water soluble preservatives only. And selection of wood preservatives for handicrafts. It depends upon the properties of the wood to be treated and the anticipated service life and the properties of the chemical or formulation. Wood preservative formulation for handicraft must be toxic to fungi, termites, and borers. It should be chemically safe, stable, and it is safe, it should be safe to handle not to have corrosive properties and the permanency of the wood preservative in the treated wood should be more. 
And common wood preservatives used in handicraft uh, uh, articles are, treating handicraft articles are, uh, organic solvent type also can be used, copper and zinc naphthenates, but it is not advisable. It is better, better to use water soluble type. It is easy to handle also and eco-friendly also. Comparatively, compared to uh, the solvents, water is more uh, eco-friendly. So water soluble type, boric acid, borax, copper sulfate and boric acid and zinc salts. Copper sulfate is not desired, but if in case of, uh, for, if the fungal attack is more, then we have to use copper sulfate. Otherwise, boric acid borax or boric acid with zinc salts can be used as a preservative. So boric acid and uh, boric, copper sulfate are solution, we can see the color. The um, copper sulfate imparts some blue color to the wood. So boric acid and borax, it will not impart any color to the uh, treated wood. So it is preferred for the preferred as a food preservative. So copper sulfate is blue in color. Boric acid will be in white color. So, and then now we know the preservatives, what are the preservatives? Now for the preservation treatment methods, there are different treatment methods. So wood preservation treatment methods are, first one is prophylactic treatment or the remedial treatment method. Second one is diffusion process, dipping or soaking method, pressure treatment method, sap displacement method, and bushery method. Bushery method is also a pressure treatment method. So, but uh, this is a different technique for green timber, treating green timbers or bamboos. So non-pressure treatment. So for handicrafts, we can use non-pressure treatments also. Non-pressure treatment includes superficial applications such as brushing, spraying, pouring and dipping, and diffusion process. Diffusion process may be used with a green or wet wood. This process employs waterborne preservatives that will diffuse out of the uh, water in a treatment paste, treatment solution or treatment solution into water in the wood. So they differ widely in the preservative penetration and the retention. So diffusion process is very, is very important. And uh, this is economical method also. It can be used for treating, treating large quantity of material with adequate retention. Prepare a solution of high concentration of uh, the diffusible chemicals, that is water soluble chemicals only, 10% boric acid or borax in a dipping container. Dip the samples in the solution for one week. Stack the material closely under non drying conditions for 10 to 20, 20 days to allow the diffuse uh, for the allow of, uh, allow of diffusion of chemicals. So, pressure method. So, pressure method requires a pressure, pressure, preservative treatment plant. The main steps involved in the pressure process are applying of pre preliminary vacuum, fill up the cylinder with the preservative solution, and after that, we have to apply some pressure. Release the pressure after some uh, known duration. Uh, empty, uh, empty the cylinder with the, of the preservative, and again dry, uh, uh, we have to apply vacuum for drying, and then release the vacuum. These are the steps involved in the pressure method. So advantages of the pressure method treatment over non-pressure method treatment method is deep and uniform penetration is there. Wood can be preconditioned in the treatment chamber, faster and more reliable process, more easily controlled and regulated. So sap displacement, it is uh, one of the uh, important method for treating the green timbers or uh, green uh, bamboos. Freshly cut uh, debug poles of varying diameters of uh, bamboo or poles, uh, may be round or split. Uh, the poles may be made to stand in their, on their bud ends, submerged in a height of nearly covering one third of its height in a suitable container containing the preservative solution. After 24 to 48 hours, the depending on the length of the length and girth of the poles or the bamboo, it has to be reversed. The preservative passes through the cells and replaces the sap of the poles or bamboo by the weak action method. Water soluble preservatives are used in this method. So the advantages of the sap displacement method is the method is very simple and avoids elaborative treatment procedure, treatment plant, and a skilled manpower. Treatment can be carried out at the felling site itself and highly refractory species like eucalyptus, casuarina, bamboo. This can be treated, easily treated by this method and large number of poles or bamboo can be treated at a time in this method. So the next method is bushery process. The bushery process requires equipment. Dr. Bushery of the France developed this process for treating green timber or bamboo. This is the most commonly used sap displacement technique where we can treat bamboo quickly in large number, bamboo or poles. That is, it should be in green condition. So it consists of a storage tank of 30 to 50 liters capacity where preservation solution is stored. 
At the bottom of the container, the main pipe is attached. The main pipe is attached with a divisible pipe with a stop cocks, stop cocks and rubber tubes of the different girth and where the poles has to be attached. So freshly cut branches with the branches, along with the branches we had to, along with the bark in case of poles. So uh, in, with, the, which, uh, with the leaves intact are attached to a rubber outlet by their butt ends connecting to the reservoir of the preservating solution. At an air pressure to be applied. After the preservative, after this, um, the air pressure is applied to the surface of the uh, sample. The preservative the, displaces the sap. It is then forced out of the, at the other end. And we can see the color of the solution changing from colorless to color of the preservative. So uh, it can be carried out within one to three hours. So this is the uh, process. With the, along with the branches, it has to be carried out. And as we can see after some time dripping of the sap and preservative solution, we can see the change of color from colorless of the sap to color of the, our preservative. So wood preservatives for handicrafts are, I told you, you know, boric acid and borax. Here, 5% of the solution is used. That is in one is to one ratio. That is, for example, 2.5 gram of boric acid and 2.5 gram of borax in 100 ml of water to be used. More effective against insects and less effective against fungus, this, this combination. But if you want, we can add little bit of 1% of copper sulfate to add, give uh, antifungal, uh, anti it, has, it has a fungi uh, antifungicide. So my method of application is surface application, brush coating and spraying, it can be done. Dipping depends upon uh, the size like 24 hours to 96 hours. So after all these treatment methods, conditioning is very, very important. Whether it is pressure treated or dipping treatment or diffusion, whatever it is, after treatment, it has to be conditioned properly. After preservative treatment, sample should be allowed to dry under shade with a proper stacking method for uniform circulation of air for three to four weeks, depending on the size of the plank or the poles for the proper fixation of the preservative chemicals inside the wood. So for stacking bamboos, this is the procedure. It is to, all the stacking should be, especially for bamboos, it should be horizontal uh, stacking is preferred. So steps to be followed in wood preservation treatment is drying of the specimens to required moisture content before treatment. First of all, we had to choose, if it is green condition, we had to, after felling itself, we can start the treatment method. For uh, dry wood, we had to dry it to a proper moisture content and treatment of the wood with the preservatives. Second step. Third step is conditioning of the specimens to, uh, uh, depending on the this thing for the fixation of the uh, preservative chemicals and exposure of the spe specimens to various tests that we have to do. Whether it has taken preservative or not, that we can uh, test by various tests. So after these, all these things, preservation treatment, everything is over. Storing of the material is one of the important factor how to store these materials and the finished handicraft, uh, handicraft item to preserve them for a long time. Handicraft item should be made from the mature and wood, uh, matured wood or bamboo. Suitably dried material should be stored on a raised platform. That is one of the important uh, steps. Warehouses should have a free flow of air and proper floor. It should, have, it should not have muddy floor. It should, have, it should be a paka floor. Warehouses should not be damp. For achieving this, hygroscopic chemicals such as Raw lime or uh, silica gel can be packed, uh, silica gel packed bags can be generally uh, put in the suitable spots. Waste organic uh, materials should not be left lying about, they are become the potential inoculum. So periodical spraying of uh, the common insecticide, mild insecticide can be done in the, for, in the warehouses. Periodical inspection of the raw materials and finished products should be made and the infected species, uh, infected specimens can be removed. And while doing the preservative treatment, these are the safety measures we have to take. So wood preservative chemicals, these are all toxic chemicals. They should be well understood. Wear suitable protective clothing like gloves, masks, and safety glasses. And follow the instruction given by the manufacturer. Do not remove the treated timber from the treated area until the preservatives uh, have started, uh, stopped dripping. Any spillage of the chemical should be immediately attended. So if our inner, if our uh, water soluble uh, the chemicals, we had to pour a lot of water. If it is oil, then we had to put some sawdust or blotting papers. So first aid help should always be available. These are all the safety pressures. 
safety measures. So thank you. Thank you, madam. Uh, our next speaker for the day, Professor Barun Shankar Gupta. He completed his PhD from the Department of uh, Civil and Envi Environmental Engineering, Norwegian University of Science and Technology, Norway. And before completing his doctorate, he was involved as a researcher at the Pennsylvania State University and Washington State University in USA, Institute National de la Recherche Agronomic at France, and University of Toronto in Canada. He did his MSc in Wood Science and Technology from the Forest Research Institute, Dehradun. As a technologist, he worked at the Paharpur Cooling Towers Limited India, which is the world's leading process cooling equipment manufacturer. He owns a patent for the same also. He's a member of several scientific communities, editor of international journals, and uh, reviewer to several international journals also. Presently, he is working as a, as a professor at the Indian Institute of Crafts and Design, which is an undertaking of government of uh, Department of Industries, Government of Rajasthan. With this, for a talk, uh, for a talk on wood uh, handicraft sector, issues related to design and product quality, I hand over to Professor uh, Shankar Gupta, please. Thank you, madam. Hope I am audible. So, uh, I'm audible, right? Yes, sir. Very much, sir. Continue, sir. Yes. And uh, thank you to IWST for giving me the opportunity to uh, present my thoughts uh, that are very relevant for the handicraft sector. First of all, I would like to say a good afternoon to my teachers and respected delegates and uh, attendees. So, uh, before I uh, move to uh, my presentation, uh, I can start the slide with a famous uh, line by uh, uh, Lao Zhe, who is Chinese philosopher and writer. So the line states that the potter's clay, it forms a vessel and it is the space within that serves. So basically, we are talking about the maker community and the maker community, they can give a form or they can give a, a functionality to a material that can be usable. So uh, my tribute to the maker community and the craftsperson who are uh, present in this conference and uh, many congratulations for them uh, for being able to uh, participate in this conference. So uh, if we look at the human civilization, the time frame, so uh, the humans appeared on Earth uh, maybe 2.5 million years ago, and at that time they were a forest uh, uh, nomads, and uh, probably 1.8 to 1.5 million years ago, so uh, they were hunters. But when we talk about hunters, that means they were using some kind of instrument. And as we know, or uh, as uh, our geologists have excavated, the tools that were used during early days of hunting were basically made out of wood. So those uh, wooden hunting tools are basically the creations of the craftsperson, or we can say the creative thinking of the human civilization. So uh, design came much uh, before then uh, we can say uh, other uh, uh, main streams of uh, business that we are currently practicing, for example, agriculture. Though uh, agriculture is now uh, contributing probably the largest number of jobs in India, but handicraft sector is contributing to the second largest number of jobs to the uh, Indians. So handicraft has a large number of occupants. And as we can see in, the, in this time frame, so first uh, there were uh, tool design, then use of fire is basically a, a designing of space, and then wooden hearts that are uh, uh, excavated and found in Japan. So that are a very good example of mix of architecture and design. So uh, this way, the graph of design started from tool and progressed through architecture, architecture and right now we are in fashion design or cloth making. Right. 
Now, how uh, how can we uh, combine this idea that is handmade or handcraft, and then we go to design and architecture? So anything that is uh, made by hand or by human beings, uh, we can say it handcrafted unless they are using very sophisticated tool. Now, this is also a kind of uh, uh, um, misnomer, or we can say it is not properly framed that which is which one is handcrafted and which one is not. But we can easily say that uh, machine crafted are not handcrafted. Right. And this image, this is a traditional house of Manipur. So I took this picture from that uh, tribal museum in Bhopal, Mantra Pradesh. So basically this shows how handcrafted item or handcrafted columns can be used as architectural design. So we can see the human skulls, the skulls of bulls, uh, uh, can be uh, carved on wood, and these are all handcrafted. Now, handcraft or craft, whatever we say, so craft basically it is, uh, it cannot be uh, properly, uh, we can say, uh, in a uh, syllabus because it has some deep rooted values, or we can say deep seated values. Here we have three pictures. The first one, this is, uh, so we are also a technical agency for the MSME and we are uh, uh, doing uh, studies at various parts of India. The first one, it shows a wooden toy and that is in Udaipur in Rajasthan. So it shows lacquer finish and before lacquer finish, there are, uh, we can see there are very good uh, artwork that has been done on the wooden uh, surface. So uh, this wooden surface is then uh, covered with transparent lacquer finish. In the next one, we did another study that is in uh, Nagore village. So uh, uh, while we were entering into the village and its uh, craftsman community, so we saw a small boy who was playing with wooden toys and which is kind of surprising because uh, nowadays it is generally the plastic toys that uh, uh, students or kids would love to play because they are colorful. But here we can see it is a, a colorless wooden toy uh, uh, and the child is enjoying the game. And the last image, so that one, so uh, that is in Madhya Pradesh, near Nagpur, it is in Bhandara district. So we were doing uh, uh, crafts persons uh, meeting. So we were trying to understand their problem and how uh, the government schemes can be beneficial for them. So. Uh, we go to the next slide and we can see here uh, is a standing man and he is a craftsperson and he is from Rajasthan. From his attire, we can see uh, uh, he is quite simple. There is a gamcha uh, that is uh, on his shoulder. And then we can see the product on the left hand side. So his products, he's, he is basically making stool. He is uh, owning one uh, cutting cum uh, planning machine, that universal machine and he is making stools and small furnitures. So uh, the stools or furnitures that are also bearing the simplicity of the craftsman's life. So uh, that is the, uh, that is the, uh, uh, probably the uh, significant uh, uh, signature of craft because it bears the simplicity. So instead of very ornamental design, Crafts generally bear simplicity for uh, mainstream mainstream craftsperson. Next, uh, this one is from Andhra Pradesh. So we did a visit in Kadapa and Chitur district, and all of us knows that uh, there are uh, famous idols, uh, uh, mostly of. Okay. Thank you for the message. Anyway, so uh, uh, the idols uh, and uh, those are sold near Tirupati because there are a lot of devotees who come to Tirupati area and they see these idols and then they buy it. And we can see the craftsman, he is delicately trying to carve out Ganesha Murti on the left hand side and then the finalized Ganesha Murti. So this is from a shrub and we call it Akanda or uh, if I, uh, uh, um, remember it correctly. So the botanical name is Calotropus gigantica. So those are bush shrubs that is found all over the 
uh, uh, deciduous region of India and along the national highway. So the artisans, they grab these uh, uh, bush shrubs, they cut small length, maybe uh, around eight to 10 inches that they can get from these shrubs and they carve out beautiful these uh, idols and then they sell it. We visited another village that is in Seti Gunta. So uh, Rajarani uh, doll cluster, uh, uh, it is quite famous for making the mythological uh, dolls for the uh, peoples of Andhra Pradesh. And they also, they use different kinds of food species. So previously they used to use the uh, red sanders and sometimes they even used the red sandalwood for a uh, 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 customer who would be willing to pay a very high price. But today, because of the lack of the good quality wood, they are even using mango wood also. And then they are uh, coating it with uh, some paint and those are chemical. So that gives a fake appearance of a red sanders or red sandalwood. This is in uh, Kadapa district. Now, when we uh, look into the uh, design, uh, so a design has to involve a process and material, right? So uh, without a process, we can't make something out of a material. So here is one crafts per person. He's uh, basically uh, carving out a small, uh, we can say it's a cylindrical form out of a wooden surface. And he is basically using a lathe machine that has been uh, developed by his own idea. So basically, when we talk about a craftsman, he is himself a designer. So he is probably the uh, better designer than a uh, design college graduate or a uh, person who has never uh, used these things in their life. Now, uh, the process, uh, because uh, whenever we talk about design, the process should be involved, the tool should be involved. So here we can see there is a, a small tool, the handhead tool, and he's uh, uh, carving out uh, some goddesses uh, outfit out of that tool. So uh, again, this is a symbiosis of hand-eye coordination and with a tool that is basically uh, taking out a shape uh, out of, we can say, uh, raw wood. So uh, when we talk about a crafts community or handicraft sector, basically they are making something out of nothing. Now that nothing is was the first picture that I had shown, that was a bush shrub. So bush shrub is basically nothing, but uh, the crafts community, they are uh, making something out which is valuable and uh, which has demand in market and people would love to take those things. So uh, they are creating something, they are maker community and they are making something out of nothing. And this is the uh, craftsman society, we can say, or maker community society. So this is a very common picture. In all over India, we can see that uh, they uh, make a, uh, a temporary shelter and within that shelter four or six craftsmen uh, see, uh, sit uh, side by side and whatever material they get they try to carve out the uh, uh, items or designs that have at least a little demand in local market so that they can earn some money right now uh, what I had shown in those previous pictures is basically the fact that is being, uh, we can say, practiced in most of the craft villages in India. But uh, in this picture, uh, this one particular, so this is uh, taken in probably uh, the Bangalore International Airport or maybe the uh, Delhi International Airport, where we can see a nicely arranged stack of beautiful dolls that are uh, packaged nicely with good diagrams and good instructions on how to unwrap it, how to play it, and for whom uh, the dolls or the toys are made for. For example, there would be uh, toys or dolls for three years kid, there would be toys or dolls for six years kid, there would be activity games for 10 years kid. So uh, these are the little mentioning or specification we can say that the consumers need uh, to know about whatever they want to buy. So that is the uh, one of the need that the handicraft sector uh, 
needs to address these days. So uh, we can come to an analysis uh, for whatever we have seen in the previous uh, uh, few slides. So uh, when we talk about handicraft sector of India, so uh, we are fortunate to have a huge maker community and who have a very uh, innate or in-depth knowledge that we can say to handcraft out uh, something that has usability or functionality out of nothing. And also uh, those handcrafted items, they have cultural and social association. For example, I had shown the Rajarani doll, uh, uh, we can say the Rajarani doll cluster. They are uh, making out dolls, which has some mythological uh, uh, significance among the local community. And for that one only, uh, the doll is having a market segment. So there is a cultural and social association, and that is what handicraft sector is bringing out throughout generation. There is demand in market, obviously, and uh, most importantly, the handicraft sector, because it is less mechanized, they use a lot of uh, uh, mechanical, uh, or we can say the human mechanics or uh, mechatronics, uh, human mechatronics. So it releases very less amount of toxic gases in the atmosphere. So it is one of the least polluting sector uh, in terms of uh, emission. On the other hand, we have weaknesses also. Now this handicraft sector, uh, they have been practicing age old technologies for several generations and uh, they do not have access to new technology. And for that, uh, there are government schemes and uh, we as a, a, a technical uh, uh, a person from IICD, we also try to help them. Then there is a lack of design. Now, uh, this lack of design is not a fault for the uh, craftsmen or the handicraft sector because uh, from childhood, they are being taught to do uh, handcrafting or crafting so that the family can get some income. So it is basically the social pressure, we can say, or the economic condition of the uh, country that is uh, probably inhibiting the uh, design intervention within this sector. Then uh, the uh, product quality certification is uh, another important thing that the government uh, or the uh, institutional framework needs to be uh, uh, award because uh, other, uh, otherwise we can't uh, probably organize this sector into a common direction. Then lack of local market for many of the craft sector, for example, I had shown the dolls of Udaipur. So Udaipur dolls, they do not have market in uh, local areas. Most of the dolls are shipped either to Mumbai or to Delhi or to Bangalore, and uh, they, are, uh, they get high price. So um, uh, it, it is a matter of concern. Then the other thing is with irregul uh, irregularity. So, most of the artisans, they are paid on daily basis or hourly basis, and sometimes it is very low. So I have a data that I can show. So uh, uh, we did a survey in several regions and material wastage. Now in this material wastage, this is also probably not the fault of the artisan because they are not uh, trained enough. So uh, uh, we do some uh, programs uh, that are community education type and through it we try to generate awareness about the value of a material and how small items can also be used. For example, suppose there is a uh, doll maker and a lot of chips are coming out. So those chips can be used for making uh, jewelries for uh, earrings or maybe at least the rakhi. So uh, these things can be done. And the opportunities uh, uh, that uh, uh, we have seen right from the beginning and I remember uh, uh, Damodaran sir, Dr. Damodaran. So he has emphasized that uh, there are huge export potential and um, there is a huge opportunity for our craftsmen to sell their products uh, because uh, our craftsmen, they uh, sell uh, or they manufacture product that I had shown uh, that has association with culture and society. So that's why it has got high value. So uh, in contrast to the American or European uh, items uh, that has mainly, uh, we can say simplistic design or very low use of material, our crafts uh, person produce material that have very high association with local or cultural values. And when we see those products, we uh, uh, 
uh, can say die to earn it or uh, die to buy it. So that's why it, it has got a very huge export market. Then also the uh, craftsmen, since most of them are not properly educated, so they should be uh, given uh, education, uh, at least the basics, and then they should be given a little freedom to explore. For example, a doll maker should not uh, stick into only the doll making, but instead he can uh, uh, be given freedom to make, say, jewelries or some other items. And cultural values are obviously important, so that's why our uh, handicraft sector is having a very good export earning potential. Now, the threats are uh, the most common that we have seen in the previous all presenter slides that we have a very, uh, uh, very uh, less amount of resources available these days uh, that can be freely accessed. So, uh, freely accessible resources are very less these days and artisans have to pay. And if they pay the amount of uh, money to buy the uh, raw material, then they can't sell the product into a cheaper price. So, uh, that is a big problem for the crafts community. And there is also shifting consumer preferences. Now, these days, the uh, we can say the 5G generation, they prefer a uh, mall culture, they prefer crowdy street instead of going to, uh, say, a uh, uh, mandir or temple. So, uh, the shifting consumer preferences is becoming a hindrance for the local craftsmen, craftsmen to sell their product. And competition with the plastic items. So, uh, whenever there are uh, uh, plastic product that they, they can be mass produced and those are little cheaper and um, can be a very uh, bright colored item so that can gain the consumer's attention easily so these things are the threats that we have found uh, when we uh, did study in several parts of india now craft cl uh, cluster map so uh, uh, that we all know so uh, india is fortunate to have a craft the communities all uh, over the India, and these uh, pointers are showing only the big cluster. So the, uh, there are villages uh, where we went in tribal villages. So uh, the tribals are very good in making bows and arrows, and they make very fine finishing. So those are also uh, a craft item that can be uh, uh, probably um, sold in some or other way. Now. Uh, if we look into the uh, solution, so uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, the, at the opening ceremony, so uh, uh, the, uh, there was a presentation, uh, and the presenters said that we are exporting probably 27% higher than previous year's export data. So that means uh, uh, wood uh, handicraft has a huge market in outside world, but the main hindrances are that I, I had shown before, one is natural resources, and the second one is uh, probably uh, this one, the wage. So this wage uh, disbalance is is very uh, common because uh, when we uh, went into several craft sector, we had seen that uh, craftsmen are uh, uh, doing income of probably 200 rupees per day. And a very skilled person would be uh, doing an income of 700 rupees per day, while the semi-skilled uh, person would be uh, doing an income of, say, 200 to 300 rupees per day. So uh, that um, income is not sufficient for him to allow uh, him to uh, send his kid to a good school or send his kid to a good uh, crafts institute or maybe IWST to pay money to get training. So. Uh, this is a uh, economic uh, burden uh, for the crafts community that we have identified. There are several schemes by the government, for example, Ambedkar Jojana and also uh, Development Commission Handicrafts ha has floated several schemes. So below is a artisan card by one of the artisan from Sethi Gunta in uh, Andhra Pradesh. So uh, these schemes, they can give benefit, but again, these benefits are not, uh, we can say sufficient to uh, cover the whole community, right? So, uh, and this is another hindrance that uh, we all know. So uh, whenever there is a raw material and something is carved out of that raw material, so there are uh, different kind of wastages. So uh, in some craft community, we have seen or observed 
that uh, a, a little fragment of wastages are being reused for another product. But in most craft community, we have seen that the wastages are being used uh, mainly for uh, fuel wood, for example, for daily uh, cooking activities. So uh, that kind of raw material wastage is um, very, uh, we can say, harming for our uh, environment. Then we come to design part. So in the beginning, I have told or uh, we have seen through these slides that craftsmen or the maker community are much better designer than an educated industrial designer or an educated person. So they know what is good and they know what is bad. But the problem of their good and bad uh, criteria is that they are thinking about a limited amount of consumer or customer. So suppose uh, there is a uh, a craftsman in say uh, Tirupati, so he would be thinking only about the uh, uh, visitors who would be coming to the Tirupati temple, but would not be thinking about the larger community. So uh, that is another hindrance that is uh, uh, probably uh, not allowing the crafts community to explore with uh, their various design forms. Also, uh, they have this pressure of earning at least 200 rupees per day. Now, if they do a lot of experiment, they will not even be able to earn that 200 rupees per day money. So, uh, these are the hindrances. Now, I uh, uh, come to the last or the uh, second last slide. So, uh, there is another uh, line by again the uh, same philosopher, Lao Zhe. So, he says that a house is built with solid walls. So uh, we all know that uh, craftsmen, they are uh, building something. And uh, when we talk about, uh, suppose, a toy that has a functionality, for example, there are wheels that are attached with the toy. So uh, that gives a little value addition. So unless there is value addition to the already existing crafts in the country, so we will be gradually losing market. So uh, for this only, I have used this particular quotation. So, if unless there is window and door, the uh, uh, house is not usable. So, uh, uh, a house must be having window door to allow a human to enter. Similarly, a craft that is being marketed or that is being manufactured must be having something uh, communicating with the user or with the consumer. So, that communication could be uh, something like adding some uh, more functionality. For example, we had seen a presentation where the presenter had said that they are uh, uh, doing uh, uh, sophisticated uh, toys that can have, say, uh, uh, chips or motherboards inside. So, uh, this thing probably the need, but again, uh, there is a warning also. For example, if we go for too much of sophistication, or too much, say, mechanical burden, then uh, the future generation will stop thinking. So probably uh, that could be a warning from, uh, we can say, uh, the old man's uh, word. So uh, we may stick to the cultural and social values instead of marching towards uh, 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 Industry 4.0. And with that, I uh, would like to say thank you again to all listeners and many thanks to IWST for inviting the craftsmen uh, for, uh, for this conference along with the scientists and tech, uh, technical persons. So here you can see uh, uh, that is our institute, Indian Institute of Craft and Design. So we are the only design institute in India uh, that is solely dedicated to crafts. So we uh, work with craftsmen's words and uh, uh, there are some uh, opportunities uh, that uh, we are trying to roll out for uh, kids of craftsmen. So uh, there are uh, so those uh, those craftsmen who have interested uh, interest in uh, making their kid educated in design or in other uh, uh, kind of uh, philosophy, they can uh, contact. But uh, as usual, those fellowships are very limited. And uh, maybe uh, the uh, fees are a little high. So that is another problem. So we also feel that uh, there should be some kind of fellowship for uh, crafts community, but uh, still we are lacking. So that is uh, probably a policy decision that our government would be taking. Thank you.
Thank you, ma'am. So I'm now share, uh, stopping the screen sharing. We can uh, can the IWST give the contact of Dr. Barun sir? Excellent presentation. And uh, Triveni, madam, I need to get to a next meeting. Kindly excuse me. One o'clock. I have to get to the next meeting. I'm Sri Nivasan here. Sure, sir. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure, ma'am. Always be with uh, IWST. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, we now move forward, and uh, we have the last speaker of the day, Mr. V. Singh Gautam. He has completed his master's in botany from the Department of Botany, Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi, and uh, he was involved in research activities as a PhD scholar in the same department. He has published uh, research articles and book chapters in international journals. Quite recently, he has joined the uh, Institute of Wood Science and Technology and is currently working here as Scientist B. Uh, today, he'll be talking on the common hindrances in the wooden handicraft sector in India and its solution strategies. Uh, over to Mr. Gautam, please. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my topic is a common hindrance in wooden handicraft sector in India. So, uh, as we know, the Indi uh, Indian wooden handicraft sector is an unorganized sector, and uh, it's a uh, uh, it is an uh, integral part of uh, India's rich and unique customs. Uh, all the earlier speakers have already told, so I'm not going in detail. So uh, now the question arises: uh, Why we have to choose the wooden handicraft, not the other uh, uh, handicraft? Uh, there is a target that India will reduce the total projected carbon emission by one uh, billion tons from now onwards till 2030. And by 2030, India will reduce the carbon intensity and its economy by less than 40 percent. So by the year 2070, India will achieve the target of net zero uh, carbon emissions. So how we will achieve? We will achieve it by, uh, uh, by forestation or the planting the, uh, uh, or the plantation. So, uh, because uh, wood uh, would have cap capacity to lock the carbon for long duration and it uh, helps in mitigation of the climate change. Uh, carbon is a uh, carbon in wood remains stored until the wood uh, wood deteriorates or it burn. Uh, wood is a eco-friendly and sustainable material. Uh, and uh, one of the most interesting data is the. Uh, uh, the carbon uh, carbon dioxide storage potential of timber is enormous. It is uh, estimated that uh, 0.9 tons of carbon dioxide is trapped in every tons of wood. Uh, 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 wood is natural material. Uh, as we know, uh, it is a renewable, reusable, and biodegradable material. Uh, uh, the uh, mat the material has been used uh, since ancient time. And uh, therefore, skilled workers uh, uh, who have adequate knowledge about the different kinds of wood are easily uh, available globally. Uh, these, uh, uh, these are the major species used in the various handicraft sector, uh, uh, especially Derbezia Ciso Tectona grandis, uh, play a uh, most important role uh, in the wooden handicraft sector. And also other species uh, is also there, but it is less. Uh, the major destination of uh, Indian wooden handicraft uh, uh, in foreign countries, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Indian wooden handicraft ex uh, ex uh, exported in foreign countries, especially in USA, UK, Switzerland, and Saudi Arabia. The most uh, the uh, the most of the uh, wooden handicraft of uh, of India is exported to USA. Now we come to the uh, our main topic: the uh, common hindrance and challenges in the handicraft sector. Uh, the the one of the major problem of the uh, 
handicraft is the lack of the quality raw materials. Uh, uh, generally, uh, uh, since ancient time, uh, the artisans were dependent on the uh, traditional species. But uh, due to the over exploitation and extensive utilization, uh, that species has been uh, uh, ex exploited. So, uh, so the artisans are facing the uh, problems of the raw materials. And uh, another problem is the seasoning agents of deterioration. Uh, due to the uh, due to the unawareness uh, in the artisans uh, uh, before the, before making up the uh, handicraft, uh, they are they are not following the uh, uh, proper seasoning techniques and uh, wood preservation technique. So, uh, if uh, the artisans are uh, not following that techniques, the uh, the wood uh, uh, wood are uh, susceptible to uh, for the bi biological agents. And uh, other problem is poor exposure to the new technology, uh, middle, uh, middleman involvement, outdated te techniques for uh, manufacturing, and uh, no standardization of the product, poor marketing uh, strategy, and uh, competition from mechanized good. Nowadays, uh, there are uh, several kinds of uh, machines has been come in market. So uh, uh, local artisans have to compete with all those uh, machines so it is also one of, one of the problem of the artisans for a certification and uh, one of the major problem is the lack of uh, market linkage because uh, handicraft sector is unorganized sector so uh, there is no uh, much uh, uh, linkage in the market to uh, sell their product and uh, traditional designs. Most of the uh, uh, local or the small uh, artisans are uh, uh, preparing uh, traditional designs of the wooden handicraft. But uh, uh, that uh, craft are not uh, uh, have much importance in the market in comparison to the uh, 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 latest design. And the la uh, lack of the proper guidance and encouragement uh actually government uh, government institution organizing uh, uh, several webinars and uh, uh, works of for the artisans but uh, uh, they are not properly guided and encouraged so the lack of the interest by the second generation because of uh, no proper guidance so the lack of the interest by the second generation and uh, ultimately scarcity of, scarcity of the skilled labor happens and uh, high, high production costs and uh, high excise duty, limited uh, credit facilities uh, to the artisans, and uh, lack of financial support. Uh, Indian handicraft product uh, is non-global uh, uh, non style. Uh, GI tag certification is so critical in India. And uh, uh, one of the major problem is uh, there is no branding of the handicraft product in TV or media. Uh, it is also one of the problems because uh, if you open your television, you will find uh, several types of news like politics, but you will not find uh, such kind of uh, the branding, such kind of the branding of the handicraft product and uh, other uh, uh, handicraft uh, uh, related product. Uh, in, the, in the last year, we visited uh, three handicraft clusters, uh, Kinal, Ramampati, and Lakshmigiri handicraft, handicraft clusters. And uh, we found the, follow, uh, we found the uh, following uh, constant in that handicraft clusters. And the Ram, uh, in Kinal handicraft cluster, uh, the most prominent uh, problem was uh, uh, raw materials. The artisans uh, were using Givosia Rotli farmings uh, as a raw material for making the uh, uh, handicraft, especially toy. But uh, due to the extensive utilization of this species, has, uh, it is not available in um, great amount in the uh, cluster. And um, uh, in the Tamampati handicraft cluster, the, they, they were using Semenya salmon as a traditional species, but uh, uh, it is also not available in uh, extensive amount. And in the, similarly, in the Lakshmigiri Palli handicraft cluster, uh, the artisans uh, uh, were using Manika and Hexendra, but uh, uh, in that, that uh, 
traditional species also not available in that handicraft clusters marketing channel marketing issue and mar uh, marketing channel lack of shelters middleware involvement and the lack of uh, incentives in the uh, uh, artisans and the uh, increased price of the raw materials is also one of the uh, problem of all this cluster cluster now we come to the solution strategy uh, actually uh, uh, for the for uh, for the raw material availability we have to uh, we have to go for the agroforestry and uh, farm uh, farm grown forestry uh, the art, uh, the artisans or the wood based sector should uh, go for the agroforestry and uh, uh, if a traditional species is not available so we have to opt for the alternative uh, species plantation and uh, constitution of the proposed wood council of india and wood council at the state and national level uh, uh, should be uh, uh, done uh, to to counsel the uh, scarcity of the wood in st state as, as well as in regional level and uh, uh, for the uh, for the seasoning and uh, and uh, uh, wood preservation uh, preservation technique proper for processing of wood for handicraft manufacturer manufacture should be there uh, here uh, before the before making the uh, wooden craft proper process, pro processing of the uh, wood should be there as well as uh, as well as the uh, eco friendly wood preservative should be followed by the artisans uh, generally uh, generally uh, in the uh, we have we have uh, seen in the kinal and the tamapatti handicraft cluster the most of the artisans uh, generally uh, throw their uh, wood in the uh, open area uh, they are not following the uh, proper uh, seasoning procedure, so it uh, it get cracks and invite the uh, various kinds of the biological agents, so would get uh, destroyed. And here the uh, mini minimize the middle involve middleman involvement. So we have to create your own market. Uh, so uh, and uh, you have to create your market strategy. So uh, a little bit uh, you will able to. Uh, uh, minimize the burden of the uh, minimize the middleman involvement. Standardize your uh, product. So uh, here, uh, uh, most of the uh, artisans are generally making their product, uh, but they are uh, uh, they they are not following any standard procedure. Uh, so uh, before uh, before uh, making the craft, they have to follow the BIS standard. Uh, it may be either for the seasoning or the wood preservative techniques. So uh, it can be also one of the solution uh, to solve the problem of the artisans. And uh, other solution strategy to, de to develop your market strategy, strategy and a proper marketing channel. So uh, as, I, as I have earlier told that uh, you have to create your own strategy. So uh, another uh, uh, solution strategy is uh, uh, to reduce the uh, excise duty uh, because the, there is a high uh, high cost of the uh, handicraft, but there is a high excise duty. So government government should focus uh, on the uh, to reduce the excise duty to mobilize the uh, number of the artisans in the uh, handicraft, and uh, they have to also provide the credit facilities. And uh, now we come to the strategy to prevent the dying handicraft uh, industry. Here, uh, before uh, before uh, making the craft, uh, we have to uh, you have to understand the global market, and uh, before making it, because of what kind of demand uh, in the global market and what kind of supply is required, and uh, in this product uh, you will get the benefit, and you, in this product you will get loss. You have to understand the uh, global market uh, and other strategy is to increase the interaction with the consumer so if uh, artisans are the other uh, hand, handicraft making industry if uh, they will interact with the consumer they will uh, they will they will uh, connect uh, uh, their buyers and uh, uh, buyers and uh, it will be easy to understand how to uh, 
how to sell uh, their product in the market. And uh, other uh, strategies to uh, bring back the mixture of the old and new designs. Because the most of the artisans uh, are the focusing on that uh, traditional design. So to, to, uh, to get back the uh, uh, handicraft, both the, both the mixture of old and new designs should be selected. Then the, uh, then the uh, art, artisans uh, will be more benefited. And uh, other uh, is a strategy to protect the dying handicraft is uh, uh, recognize uh, it as a uh, source of supplementary income and uh, understand the promotional strategy. Artisans should understand the uh, promotional strategy, how to promote their, uh, uh, their handicraft uh, in the various, uh, um, uh, either in the national or international market. And uh, uh, they have to conduct a workshop. Uh, organize, uh, various wood-based organizations should uh, uh, conduct a workshop to, uh, to make awareness in the artisans and uh, in, uh, initiate the collaboration between artisans and designers. So uh, this is the era of the uh, new designs. So, uh, uh, so art, uh, artisans should uh, always in con uh, uh, should always uh, connected uh, with the designers. So they will be able to uh, get new designs of the uh, product, and that they, and then they can sell their uh, product in the market in, and the good price. And uh, the, there is, uh, in spite of that, there is also uh, go uh, government and NGO supports. Uh, here, the comprehensive handicraft cluster development scheme. Uh, the objective of the, this uh, uh, scheme is uh, to creation of the cluster assets and community infrastructure to develop common facility centers, raw material uh, banks, resource centers, and physical infrastructure such as road, water, supply, uh, power, etc. And uh, other uh, or organization that is uh, working for to resolve the problem of the artisan is India. Uh, India Handmade Bazaar. Uh, it is launched in January 2017 that fo uh, focuses on market development directly for producers. Uh, it is a, uh, it is a produ producer, uh, pro it, it is a producer's online marketplace, beneficiary all the registered artisans. Uh, export Promotion of Council uh, has uh, always uh, organizing virtu vir uh, virtual fairs and exhibition for uh, for uh, for various for the for making trend to the artisans and they have uh, 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 they have uh, they have been uh, uh, organizing uh, various uh, uh, they have been organizing various uh, uh, virtual courses in uh, handicraft export management uh, one of the fair that was organized uh, by epch was in 2021 and uh, uh, government of India is uh, uh, encouraging to artisans uh, so uh, uh, increase the in incentives uh, from uh, uh, from five to seven percent under merchandise export uh, from India scheme uh, uh, for a handicraft item which will help exporter to uh, uh, convalence uh, the input cost involved in the production of the handicraft and uh, will lead to uh, competitive, pri uh, competitive pricing and target at the uh, improvement export, imp improvement of the export. And uh, another uh, organization that is uh, working to solve the problem of artisan is the Baba Saab Ambedkar Hastil Vikas Yojana. Uh, it is, uh, that organization issue, uh, issuing of uh, ID card to the artisans and uh, the, uh, they are also uh, working on the supplying of the improved modern tools to the artisan and providing uh, training and seminars to the artisan. And uh, uh, they are also uh, uh, making awareness how to sell their product in the market. And uh, MOU uh, uh, is signed by EPCS to promote handicraft sector as a part of higher education and uh, uh, aiming at m m making young professional artisans meet with global market challenges. Uh, IST, uh, IWST uh, uh, Bangalore uh, initiated uh, 
the effort to have uh, effort have been made to search for uh, alternative or substitute uh, species for traditional uh, use handicraft uh, species and uh, IWST uh, have, have been conducting conducting several training and workshop for making awareness in artisans and uh, IWST is uh, always uh, uh, have, uh, organizing and participating in various seminars institute uh, industry uh, interaction meets also and uh, the IWST is uh, uh, the contribution made by the uh, institute also indicate its active participation for the growth and welfare of wooden handicraft sector. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, with this, we come to the last lecture. And uh, today we have many experts, wood artisans, traders, and wholesalers from various handicrafts uh, clusters uh, who have joined us in this webinar. I now welcome them to share some of their experiences with us here today. So to start with, uh, may I please invite Mr. C.V. Raju from Etikopa, Andhra Pradesh to share his experience, please. Mr. C.V. Raju. Hello. Hello. Are yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hearing me? Yes, sir. Please yeah. continue, sir. Thank we are you. able to hear you. <laughs> if you can uh, switch on your video, that would be great. Switch off my video. Okay. If not, it's okay, sir. You can continue. Yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity, which you have given by Wood Science and Technology. I have a long association with the Wood Sciences and Technologies from last 25 years. I, as I work with, uh, closely work with uh, VR Rao, RV Rao. Hello? Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Please continue, sir. Yeah, and Wood Sciences and Technologies I work with, and so many solutions I got with. And the sec, uh, as, um, and the locally, I I was closely associated with the wood sciences and technology in Vishakhapatnam also to find some solutions. Okay, now I am looking at where I am looking at, uh, and everything I um, heard from these my previous uh, speakers. Mainly, what I am looking at wood woods and timbers. The difference between woods and timbers that should define because. Uh, Ankudi is non-timber, and at the same time, I'm looking at to have a um, to build a platform to import the skills of dyeing skills for coloring these. Uh, uh, not only lacquer, apart from lacquer, I'm planning to apply this uh, knowledge, uh, import this knowledge to paint on that um, furniture, doors, windows, like. And at the same time, need for wood seasoning plant in sectors like Chen, uh, Etikopaka and Chennapatna to establish those uh, things, which reduce the wastage of the most of the wood. And proper humidity maintenance and the coordination between board of Indian standards. I am not, uh, it, is, it is my perception and what I am suggesting between Board of um, Bureau of Indian Standards as well as Wood Sciences and Technology. And coloring and treatment of the wood to get it longevity because it has already existence. We had uh, have so many experimentations we did in the course of my experimentation. Now I'm looking at the platform to import these uh, knowledge. And defining the dip difference between timber and non-timber. And that it is high time to archiving 
and documentation of these traditional crafts. Okay, and the quality conscious of these um, artisans, which are there in many clusters in India, which is suitable to for export for Europe and America. That is the thing. And the common facility center, it should be an iconic center, like to impart the skills for the coming generations, as well as if there is anything designing designers or all M panel, that they should come and then they should coordinate with all these um, senior artisans in this cluster and well experienced. That is the one thing which I have seen very less. The M panel designer should coordinate with the local experienced artisan to design these things with old and new design to work with. And mostly I'm looking at the platform for marketing these children toys for pre-primary school with hand-eye coordination. There's a lot of scope here. And at the same time, local materials that they can be used for coloring, for toning that um, wood materials. Like there is a lot of scope that uh, knowledge has already existed during the course of my experimentation here. I trained nearly two to three artisans here, how to extract color, how to apply the color, how to preserve the color like. And the, finally, I'm looking at M panel designers, even from the DCH or wherever, they must correlate with the local artisans, understand the proper limitations of this craft or whatever it is. Then they, if they design it, it is going to be, and the, with the coordination of Bureau of Indian Standards. Okay, that's the part of my presentation. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, we have noted down the uh, points that have been raised by you. Uh, now we move on further. Uh, may I request Mr. Suresh Babu from Kerala to share his experience, please? Mr. Suresh Babu. Yeah, he is there. Okay. Maybe uh, he'll join us later. Uh, can I have Mr. Pondravi from uh, Tamampati uh, Handicraft Cluster of Tamil Nadu to share his uh, views and experiences? No. Mr. Abhishek Bharti from Saranpur uh, Handicraft uh, Cluster. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma yes, sir. Please, sir. Uh, very good afternoon to all the members of uh, uh, this seminar. Hello. Can you hear yes, me? Sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, Ma'am, uh, first of all, I would like to thank all of you for allowing me to be part of this webinar. I have learned from uh, here a lot. Uh, I am from Saharanpur and I would like to introduce myself uh, as the exporter of wooden handicraft products. Uh, most of my clients are uh, from USA only, and I have been working in this market for last uh, three and a half years. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, like a brief introduction about this Sarampo. It is 300 year old wooden handicraft market, uh, and the annual turnover of this market is around 2,000 crores, uh, national international boats. Uh, 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 our market, uh, uh, like I have seen here, so many uh, positive examples which I would like to share, like I have seen uh, uh, people who had no education and who came from the poverty, but uh, they are uh, right now they are having a turnover of around 10 crores annual turnover. Uh, so this much potential our wood market uh, have. And, uh, and uh, uh, right now our country is facing uh, so many problems and I have seen uh, uh, and I have personally experienced that uh, 
uh, with this sector, we can uh, sort out so many problems like uh, employment generation. Uh, we have seen that people uh, of our country who have good degrees and uh, who have good education, but they are unable to get employment. But in, in our market, I have seen uh, people who have no education and they are easily able to earn around uh, 10 to 20 thousands. They have uh, their skills. And I have seen the clusters of women who, who uh, the uh, one of the benefit of unorganized sector is the, the women can work from their home. And I've seen there are so many women who make the clusters and do they are doing sending and polishing work from their home and they are able to earn around 5,000 to 6,000 per month. And uh, uh, like there is one of, uh, one of the problems that we see. Hello. Yes, Hello? sir. Continue, sir. Yes, sir. Continue. Okay. Uh, and uh, I have seen there is a uh, big problem of child labor in our country. But I've seen if, uh, if we give proper uh, training to the children, they are uh, the instead of uh, the child labor, they can become the child artisan because because like carving work, the, the, we are able to produce more hand carvers only if they, we start training them from their childhood. In the, uh, as early as we start, uh, we get good uh, uh, child artisans in our market. And uh, like uh, I have also seen there are few problems. If we sort out these problems, then we, we would be able to uplift our market to its full, full potential. Like, to, to its full potential, like uh, the artisans of the market, they are uh, well, uh, they are very afraid. They, uh, there's a problem of knowledge sharing. They do not want to train to the outsiders. They do not want to train to the new uh, children. So they want to uh, give training to their like children only, so that they are afraid that they, uh, the outsider will come uh, and they will take their skills and there will be no source of employment for them. There's one of the major problems. And the one of the problems that I see in our uh, uh, manufacturing uh, sector is the process. The process is not good. Like we do not have multitasking people. If a person is working in uh, one skills, he's 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 skilled in carving. So he's he's only working in in carving throughout the, throughout his life. He's not able to do uh, like uh, working on. He's not able to work on lathe machine. He's not able to work on bench saw machine. So I, I personally uh, try to to get my artisans trained in different skills so that if, the, if he he has not worked for bands or machine, he can work on table. So like this kind of experiment I myself do and I see that uh, this works very well. And uh, like raw material, talking about the raw material, we have enough raw material in our market. But the problem is there is no raw material bank because if we uh, suppose we get an order of a particular wood, acacia wood, but there is a problem that even if uh, uh, I have mango wood, enough mango wood, but I have, I, have, I have got the order of acacia wood. So first of all, I would like to, I will have to purchase acacia wood. Then I will have to season it. Then I will have to cut into planks. And it would it would itself uh, would take uh, two to three months time. So uh, what happens is either my products uh, my production get delayed or my order get cancelled. So this is one of the major problems. So if we get raw material bank, I've raised this issue to uh, UP government as well, but no solution has been uh, provided. And uh, you know, one of the solution which I think uh, we can work upon is, like uh, I have seen uh, the artisans and people who are uh, associated with the wood market in South, in Karnataka and in Tamil Nadu. So uh, I think if the people who are involved in wood market in uh, not, part, not part of India, if they work with the people involved in wood market of South part of India, if we work together, then we can sort out so many problems. For example, if the wood is not available in their area, uh, but uh, that, that wood is available in our area, and our artisans can also uh, produce the same kind of product. So there are so many things which can be uh, sorted out by working together. Uh, so uh, that's all from my side. Sir? Thank you for sharing your experiences. We'll see what best we can do in this regard. Uh, now may I request Mr. Suresh Babu if he's online. Thank you. Mr. Naveen from uh, Suresh Babu. Yeah. Yes, okay, yes. Mr. Suresh Babu from uh, Handicraft uh, Wholesaler from Kerala, please. Uh, uh, may Hindi welcome. G sir, no problem. Okay. Uh, मेरा नाम सुरेश बाबू केरला से मैं केरला से हूँ uh, मैं मेरा कम्मे फॉर्म का नाम दारुशिल्पी वुडन हैंडीक्राफ्ट 
मैं मतलब एक्सपीरियंस बोलेगा तो मैं ट्वेंटी ईयर वीडियो ऑन कर सकते हैं ताकि हम आपको देख सके मोबाइल पे वीडियो ऑन कर सकते हैं हेलो हाँ हाँ सर हाँ ओके मैं अभी मैं क्या करता है सब हैंडीक्राफ्ट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग करता है उसमें स्टार्टिंग करके अभी नया ब्रांड नए में डाला मैं दारू शिल्पी एक ही ब्रांड नए में हमारा माल केरला में पूरा मेरे को अंडर का ऊपर शॉप है अभी काउंटर है उधर सेल करता है लेकिन अच्छा अच्छा चल रहा है मेरे को वर्ल्ड वाइड ऑर्डर आता है मेरे को ये ऑर्डर देने के लिए कैपेसिटी नहीं है इतना ऑर्डर आता है कंटेनर कंटेनर बोल के आदमी लोग ऑर्डर भेज रहे हैं मैं स्टार्टिंग करके एक ही बार दो बार में होंगो में एक्सप्रेशन डाल दिया दारू शिल्पी का नाम में तो उधर मेरे को ज्यादा बायर मिला इसलिए उधर एक्स उधर वो काम किया ना इसलिए ज्यादा बायर मिला मेरे को वो उधर से ज्यादा ऑर्डर आता है लेकिन मेरे को देने के लिए कैपेसिटी नहीं है इतना बल्क बल्क में माल चाहिए कंटेनर 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 वो पूछ रहे मैं सब आदमी का ऐसा बात किया ऐसा डिपार्टमेंट में ऐसा कुछ हमको कुछ हेल्प नहीं मिला अभी तक नहीं मिला आ, मैं अभी नया है कि कोरोना का बाद पहले नए की बड़ा प्लान बनाया ऐसा इसमें दस लाख का ऊपर खर्चा किया एक ही प्लान बनाने के लिए इसका मशीनरी नहीं डाला लेकिन फिर कंपनी बना के नहीं ऐसा बड़ा करके ऐसा बनाया लेकिन अभी तक तो मेरे को कोई हेल्प नहीं मिलता है ऑर्डर मिलते है लेकिन वो ज्यादा खर्चा कर रहेगा इतना अपॉर्चुनिटी ज्यादा है सब मेरे को लगता है कि 200 2000 आदमी को भी ऐसा काम कर सकते हैं ऐसा हैंडीक्राफ्ट में इंडिया के अंदर हैंडीक्राफ्ट आता है चाइना से आता है अभी एक दिन मेरे को लगता है 25 फाइव का ऊपर कंटेनर आता है एक दिन पर दिन लेकिन इंडिया में ये माल इंडिया में बना सकता है इधर का कोई आदमी को क्या है मार्केट में क्या चाहिए वो बनाना पड़ेगा हम मार्केट में चाहिए क्या है वो सीखे वो पढ़ा के इधर बनाना पड़ेगा पूरा चाइना से आता है मैं अभी हमारा माल देता है ना चाइना से माल आता है वो सेम प्राइस में अभी माल देते हैं मैं वो उसमें ज्यादा नहीं देते है सेम प्राइस में लेकिन इधर लोग चाइना में नहीं जाने का ऐसा कोशिश करके माल देते हैं तो ऐसा इसमें लेडीज लोग काम करते हैं उसको काम सिखाते हैं उसको पता है ऐसा काम उसको दिखा के मैं उसको ट्रेनिंग करके माल बनाते हैं सेलिंग करते हैं अभी हमको ऑल ओवर इंडिया सप्लाई करने के भी अभी हम हमारा वेबसाइट चालू करते हैं दारू शिल्पी नाम में हमारा वेबसाइट चालू है वो अभी कंस्ट्रक्शन वर्क में हूँ वो ऑल ओवर इंडिया में सप्लाई करने के कोशिश कर रहे हैं हमारा माल चाइना से माल इधर अभी भी ज्यादा आता है लेकिन हम हमको इधर गवर्नमेंट का सपोर्ट मिलेगा तो ये दुनिया पूरा हमारा हैंडीक्राफ्ट वर्ल्ड वाइड में सेल कर सकता है चाइना का ये सेम प्राइस में डाल के नहीं है तो उसमें भी कमी करके बेच सकता है इतना कॉन्फिडेंस में काम करते हैं हम इधर भी केरला में भी ज्यादा मार्केट है हैंडी में लेकिन सब चाइना से आता है अभी चाइना से वो ब्लॉक करना पड़ेगा फिर भी आता है वो चाइना माल देते है श्रीलंका ऐसा श्रीलंका से सीधा इधर आता है माल उसमें कुछ करने का तो हमको एक ही प्लान है तमिलनाडु ने तो आंध्रा में एक ही प्लान बनाने का प्लान में वो इसमें हैंडी क्राफ्ट का पूरा उधर सप्लाई मैन्युफैक्चरिंग करने के लिए एक विलेज करने का क्राफ्ट विलेज ऐसा बोल के इसका सपोर्ट किधर मिलेगा मेरे को मालूम नहीं है मेरे को कोशिश मैं कोशिश कर रहा है किधर से सपोर्ट मिलता है उसका बात करके वो तैयार करता है वो लोग सब
जी किस टाइप का सपोर्ट की बात कर रहे हैं सर आप गवर्नमेंट से मतलब मैटेरियल प्रोक्योरमेंट या मैसेज गवर्नमेंट है तो गवर्नमेंट है तो गवर्नमेंट मिलना पड़ेगा प्राइवेट सेक्टर से प्राइवेट सेक्टर में मिलेगा तो मेरे को ये 2000 लेडीज लोगों का मादर लोगों का काम काम दे सकते हैं मेरे को आप ऑर्डर है मेरा मेल में इतना ऑर्डर आता है इतना कम इतना इतना क्वांटिटी माल चाहिए इतना क्वांटिटी माल चाहिए बोल के लेकिन देने के लिए कैपेसिटी नहीं है ये मुश्किल हम अभी ज्यादा काम कर सकते हैं अच्छा से काम कर सकते हैं अच्छा से वो मार्केटिंग कर सकते हैं अभी और ऑनलाइन में हमारा माल बेचने के लिए कोशिश कर रहा है अभी वो स्टार्टिंग किया अमेजोन तक पूरा ऑनलाइन मार्केटिंग वर्ल्ड वाइड में सप्लाई करने के लिए ऐसा स्ट्रक्चर में आया थैंक यू सर हम आशा करते हैं कि आपके बिजनेस जल्दी इम्प्रूव हो जाए नेक्स्ट में आई इनवाइट मिस्टर नवीन फ्रॉम चन्नपटना हैंडीक्राफ्ट क्लस्टर ऑफ कर्नाटका मिस्टर नवीन हेलो यस सर गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरीवन गुड आफ्टरनून सर या थैंक यू मैम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम आई एम थैंक यू फॉर द आईडब्ल्यूएसटी टीम फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग दिस वेबिनार सो फॉर व्हाट आर द व्हाट आर द इंफॉर्मेशन बीइंग गिवन इन द webinar it's useful and one more thing is apart from this webinars we need a face to face interaction like workshops or seminars to be conducted in the in the places where the artisans have been located hello yes sir so apart from this uh, webinars we also need uh, workshops to be conducted ma'am yes, we the... have noted your point sir we'll we'll try to do the best that we can we'll try to organize on these lines sir yeah as said by mr abhishek batri of sarampur that this handicap sector it's a good one ma'am means uh, there's a huge potential for this and we can earn earn a decent decent monetary decent amount from this one but the thing is there are there is a lack of skilled workers in this ma'am so as said in as said that second generation people are not coming for this vertical because this is an un unorganized sector and there is no guarantee for the income here if we get an order then only we can earn money and we can lead a livelihood otherwise uh, it will be a miserable condition for an artisans only those who are in been touch with institutions like iwst icfra so they get some information and they been in the market otherwise uh, like common artisans who are not uh, means uh, in chennapatna we have almost around 3000 to 5000 uh, artisans are there but from chennapatna i am the only person who is representing today so this should not be the case ma'am so this has to reach for uh, our majority of the artisans so that they can also uh, take it as a profession uh, and means a uh, whole from what we call uh, um one means uh, it's a for default pro um, profession for the end means full time profession and they can also lead a decent life so apart from this one uh, as mr uh, hello apart from mr as mr ritesh kumar dr ritesh kumar said regarding this uh, killing center and the seasoning sir uh, the thing is uh, we uh, we artisans work means uh, work on a small order basis sir the large amount of killing centers we don't have in our place we need a customized killing center sir like uh, uh, whatever the wood whatever the wood we have we need to do with that quantity only so if we go for outer means if we go outside so we will be asking for the uh, huge fee for that to get the killing center so if there is any technology regarding a customized killing setup we can arrange or means we can set up in our own factory that would be very useful sir so if we have any such uh, technology or uh, machinery that information can be shared to us sir that's a one thing and one more thing is as ms vani ma'am said 
regarding this treatment and the preservation of wood so we need a workshop in that regard ma'am so that uh, we can also means uh, we are following our traditional uh, methods for uh, preserving goods and all treatment and preserving so if there would be any workshop in that regard it would be very useful so by saying this i am concluding my speech ma'am thank you sir we have noted the points we'll try to get in touch with uh, navin you he is from chennapatna yes sir yes, i am sir. from chennapatna sir okay okay and do you have a common facility center or yes, sir. in your in your cluster yeah we have a huge yeah we have a huge common facility center sir okay what is, what all things are available there uh sir we have a common facility center we have a common a common tooling room where uh, artisans can get work done over there not only artisans even from uh, this one uh carpenter side also work will be done there we have a huge killing center and uh, recently we have been operating with uh, we have come up with a concept called natural fiber sir so that is also in pipeline but still not came so still not operation operation operationalized but uh, natural fiber is also one more thing which is coming to our chennapatna cluster sir and do you have any any association or the forum of the all the artisans in working in the chennapatna right uh, yes sir we have an association in chennapatna sir but uh, that is not a regular one once in a while they come and uh, uh whenever there is any workshop and all we need to go to them and we need to inform them sir there is no active participation from that uh, association sir do, do do you have a whatsapp group uh, of, of all, all your artisans uh, at least in in the whatsapp you can make 250 people together uh, sir i can share i can share the information of the association but the thing is that there should be a participation from the, their side also with the institutions like uh, this one sir iwst or uh, we, uh, we are ready to we are ready to go there and organize any kind of training that is not the issue issue is that we at least somebody has to organize these people together so there should be at, uh, at least key person to sir, to uh, to take us to them also uh, we can do sir uh, we can do sir with the support from uh, institutions we will do it sir okay okay good good thank you thank you uh, sir and one more sir as mr srinivasan from lagu udyapati mentioned that uh, in the region in the cluster regional places uh, for iti iti colleges at least there should be a part of academic about this or wood turning or wood uh, handicraft uh, syllabus sir, so that we can get at least some skilled worker we can get some work artisans or workers who can come to this vertical and uh, do this work sir uh, it's yeah, we, we have written to the secretary skill development in, in karnataka that they should start the carpentry course at, at least because only two three college iti has got the carpentry course so we have told them that at least you should start in uh, one in in each district and then uh, they should be the syllabus also should not be conventional carpentry but it should also include the the machines also so that uh, they can, they are uh, they are trained on on working on the machines also a small kind of machines which you use uh, so that kind of uh, proposal we have given to the government karnataka government if they agree uh, i think uh, one iti in each district should be the center of excellence for the woodworking yeah we expect this one sir okay thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir uh, do we have mr pondravi uh, from tamampatti cluster of tamil nadu mr santosh from kinnal handicraft cluster uh may i now request uh, dr nagesh prabhu ifs retired and pccf of of kerala forest department to kindly share his views on this webinar and join us here
Can you hear me? Can you see me? Hello. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. So thanks to IWC for having given me this wonderful opportunity of uh, seeing you and saying hello to all of you sitting at home. Quickly, I would like to share uh, two points. One is the supply of. Uh, it says already unmute. Can you hear me? And uh, yes, sir, we are able to hear you and see you also. Yeah, that's wonderful. OK, then uh, two quick points. One is uh, I was listening to one talk where the, he has listed the species. Majority of them are timber species. Whatever we say, a farmer is not going to rise this timber species because it has got a long gestation period and the market may uska, uska demand utna nahi hoga. So the only agency which can raise this timber species is the forest department. Forest department is the only department which has land. Now we have around 20, we have around 21.7% of the total geographical area. Out of that 20% is used for plantations. In this plantation also, somebody has already mentioned that at least 5% of this should be earmarked for this timber species required for the handicrafts. Now, probably IWHT and ICFRE, they can take a lead. That this is the state, this is the handicraft industry, and this is the species. And if we can make a case to government of India that there should be a policy decision that this is the this is the requirement of the waste, and this has to be compulsorily done. For that, you know, ICFRE can be an official channel. And there should be an unofficial channel. We should talk to the local MLAs, local MPs, and so many participants are, are there in the workshop. So they should also talk in the you know, uh, local MLA and MPs. They should raise the issue in the parliament so that we get the force. So there should be a policy decision for raising this timber species required for the handicraft. Number one, this guy has a point here, and wherever it is coming from the plant. Natural forest, for example, I heard, and the, the best timber, let it go for construction work and all. And for example, bullets, rosewood bullets, teak bullets, and all these things are enough for the handicrafts. And in the handicraft industry, they should be given this timber at a subsidized price. It should also be a part of the policy decision. Number is point number one. Point number two. Now, this workshop is being held as a part of Ajadega Amrit Mahoso. So 2047, 100 years of uh, celebration of our independence. All the departments are writing their plan for another, you know, till 2047, 25 years. I see a wonderful opportunity for Institute of Wood Science and Technology to divert their research programs and everything. They can do a wonderful contribution. It's the only institution probably in the government sector in the whole of the country, which has got so much of knowledge. So now probably, you know, the director I do is to MP Singh Sab can take a lead to put all these things and prepare a wonderful plan for 2047, putting what one of these issues, one of these issues, you know, the diversification of handicrafts. So with these two points, it is lunch time. There are plenty of things to say. One of these days, I will come and sit with the director. Thanks for giving me this wonderful opportunity of saying hello to you. It was a great learning experience for me. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We, we, I will, I am looking forward to meeting you and having more discussions. <laughs> we will meet all the best. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now may I invite Dr. S. P. Singh, IFS retired director, ASN, RSD, Amity University to join us here and share his views, please. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. How's Thank that, you very much. How's that I got a lot of learning from this uh, webinar. In fact, I'm also interested and in, uh, I'm uh, making such kind of efforts over there. We are taking here a lot of workshop training program for Ministry of Textile, <coughs> Textile uh, Department of Handicrafts uh, for giving uh, awareness programs, other things to the various artisans over here. Uh, I'm also uh, arranging uh, in March uh, one week IFS training course on forest based handicrafts and international trade. Uh, virtually, if you see this uh, area, I have seen uh, there are a lot of problems on towards the artisan sites. Uh, the most important is that very low uh, payment 
and the question is how the marketing is also very difficult for them. Now things have changed. Uh, now we have to go for a digital marketing. So the, and the, another important thing is the raw material, which has already been said by uh, Mr. Nagesh uh, Prabhu. We are ICFR and IWST can do more innovations that thing can be uh, done. The moreover, now the people are not interested in not only the traditional uh, uh, handicrafts, but they also want certain kind of innovations. And therefore, the institute like craft institutions. I don't know. Somebody might play. We only request uh, to every single you are uh, southern side and IWST is a pioneer institute. Really uh, make a repeated type of workshop or training program. Uh, and bring the people in one platform, then you can make a better policy decision on these matters. Uh, with this, thank you very much uh, for consideration. And I would like to kindly share uh, the telephone number, contact number, all the participants is possible so that I can interact in future. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Epi Singh and his uh, team. Thank you, sir. Good to see you after a long time. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, sir. In the chat box, I can see some uh, Bhanu Prakash from Mysore. He, he, do you want to share your views, Bhanu Prakash from Mysore? He had raised the issue that we should be considering the Mysore art cluster also for the study. Okay, so this is for Dr. Sukla to take note of it. He wants Mysore art cluster also to be included in the study. Sir, yeah. uh, please. We will we'll note it. And Suresh Babu, are you still there? Can you make your points? I am a bit confused. What point do you want to make in your chat box? Mr. Suresh, Suresh Babu, Babu, can you please come online? Sir, looks like he's not online, sir. Okay, okay. okay. Mr. Ravi? Mr. Santosh? Naveen has spoken, sir. Naveen has spoken. That's it. Okay. If Dr. Bansal is online, we would like to share, request you to share your views, sir. Bansal, sir. A.K. Bansal, sir. Dr. Neval Kadia, President of uh, All India Timber Federation. Sir, if you are there, we would like to request you to share your views both of them are not there sir i can see uh, kesha prasad dubey sir is still uh, online sir would you like to share your views sir kp dubey sir Okay, anybody who wants to make any point? House is open for the open points to make your point. Yes, sir, uh, I'm Srinivasan here. I just finished my other meeting. I came back here. I thank you, Dr. M.P. Singh and the team from IWST. My limited point is, sir, we need to work very, very closely as somebody was yeah, suggesting yeah. about digital marketing, because that is the one way forward. We should try Spelling. to integrate our artisans with Spelling. Amazon, Spelling. with Flipkart, with Spelling. all Spelling. kinds of digital marketing facility Spelling. to give them an opportunity for big business in the coming days. And I also take the advice of uh, uh, Dr. Barun Shankar Gupta ji that limited technology in uh, the products that we are designing will do it and we will not make it so high tech that it becomes like a mobile and they get addicted. Thank you very much for this opportunity.
थैंक यू थैंक यू श्रीनिवास जी थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर anybody else would like to put forth their points forward in this forum hello uh, yes, sir. my name is ankit shah i am from uttarakhand hello yes, sir carry on sir uh, ma'am uh, my question was uh, regarding gi tag uh, because we are working on bamboo bamboo craft and uh, uh, bamboo or hill bamboo ringal craft so i want uh, uh ask the question that uh, why the gap between gi tags and uh, our product uh, which are uh, handicraft which are we making means uh, the, there is a huge difference between only few products are reported as uh, gi but we are making more than 1000 products uh, how we can uh, reduce this gap uh, so our market would uh, uh, more valuable Yeah, very good point you have made, Anke. Uh, actually, uh, our clusters are not well organized. That is the issue. Once we organize our clusters, and then we try to get the GI tag for the cluster, so there there has to be some hand holding in making the in getting the GI tag. So that has to be some organized. Uh, 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 group working for that, so that is the the only issue. Somebody had taken the initiative in 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 whatever uh, uh, products or whatever area the GI tag has been obtained. So that kind of hand holding is needed. We we feel that that is a gap. So we need to work on that. Hope. Thank you, sir. Thank you. i've answered you so the, i think we need to to become more organized that is the whole issue uh, and uh, the may, uh, there are many departments working on in the area msme is there and then handicrafts uh, textile and handicrafts is also there so the products which is closer to which ministry they can they they should be attached to some cluster and actually or otherwise they can form their own cluster or the society or the trust or anything and then they and that is why i ask in the chenna partner whether do you have the association because that kind of association is very much required until you have it you will not progress much and then all the schemes of the government are for the clusters are for the group are for the association are for the society thank you Anybody else? Good afternoon, sir. This is Mohan Kumar from Mysore. Uh, I'm an artisan of Mysore Road in Lad. Able to hear me? Yeah, yeah. We can so, hear you. Could you just repeat? Uh, feel... Yeah, yeah. You are... I'm an artisan of Mysore Road in Lad. Uh, it is a GI tag product. Uh, we have from Mysore. Actually, like uh, we were discussing about the alternate uh, woods which we can use for like a uh, production of handicrafts but in our uh, designs like in mysore road inlay the grain structure of the woods that's the basic one like we'll be using it so like most of the woods like uh, they are like uh, we are getting very limited access to those things currently because of that like uh, we are limiting and like we are using color woods like rather than natural woods like this is one of the uh, like main problem we are facing in our this one our art so wanted to know like yeah what we, can do. we we are ready to work closely with you and to try to find out the the uh, understand your problem in detail and then we can suggest you the solution i think uh, we can find some some substitute of the present uh, species you are using so we can have other species which can be grown which can be grown in the agroforestry system and where the productivity can be more so we can find the substitute there are alternative timbers uh, we have to look for that uh, and we have to work together if you can just uh, write to us uh, uh, about your problem and then then we can visit you and then try to look at your problem 
Sure, sir. Thank you. Or you can also come to IWST anytime, interact with us, and then let your problem known to us. Then we will certainly work on that. Yeah, sure. Sure. Which species you are using? Uh, actually, like we use all kinds of woods, like uh, for different different uh, designs. Like okay. it is a like a wood inlay. Like we'll be using all kinds of woods. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So we can we have to look for the, the substitutes also. That is otherwise we have to augment the raw material. Otherwise, it is not possible to get the handicrafts uh, on a yeah, sustainable okay. basis. Yeah, I agree with you. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. Anybody okay, else? I think we'll close the session. Now I request uh, Ms. Dr. Anil Kumar Sethi to kindly uh, propose the formal vote of thanks. Thank you, madam. It's my privilege to propose vote of thanks at uh, this occasion. I, on behalf of the Institute, extend my sincere thanks to all the participants, speakers, senior forest officials, and experts for their valuable time and sharing their knowledge and experience. Today, you had the opportunity to hear Dr. P. K. Damodar, retired scientist KFRI and chair of excellence ICFRI, uh, Mr. B. B. S. Srinivas, vice president Logu Udyog Bharati, Mr. Gopinath Rao, deputy director MSME, Development Institutes, Bangalore. Professor Varun Gupta, Dean, Academic and Head Research, IACD uh, Jaipur, who shared their knowledge and experience on challenges and opportunities faced by wooden handicraft sector. I would like to thank all the experts for agreeing to our request and sharing their thoughts. I'd like to extend my thanks to all the speakers from IWST, uh, Mr. Ritesh David, Mrs. Sier Bani, CN Bani, and Mr. V.S. Uh, Gautam, and I appreciate their efforts in making the program informative. I'd like to thank uh, our, uh, I would like to extend our sincere thanks to Mr. C. V. Raju, Mr. Suresh Babu, Mr. Avishek Bharati, Mr. Naveen, uh, representing handicraft clusters and handicraft marketing sector for sharing their experience on wooden handicrafts and highlighting the challenges and potentials of this sector in uh, uh, employment generation. Our special thanks are due to Mr. Nagesh Prabhu, retired IFS and PCCA and HOF Kerala Forest Department, Dr. S.P. Singh, retired IFS, Director Amity School of Natural Resources and uh, Sustainable Development, Amity University, Mr. A.K. Bansal, IFS, and former additional uh, DGF and Chairman of NCCF PCA Working Group, and Mr. Naval Kedia, President Federation of All India Timber Merchants, Sawmillers and Allied Industries, for sparing their valuable time and highlighting the uh, intervention needed in ensuring sustainable raw material supply and also providing guideline, uh, guidance for the institute in uh, uh, preparing the target for uh, the year 2047. I would like to thank our director, Mr. Dr. M. P. Singh, for his constant support and guidance in organizing this webinar and making the discussion session more interactive, sir. I also extend my thanks to Mr. V. S. Atapanavar, Group Coordinator Research IWST, for his guidance in organizing today's webinar. A special mention to Mr. C. Uh, M. Sib Kumar and uh, Mrs. P. R. Triveni for their support in organizing this webinar. I'd like to thank Dr. S. R. Sukla, Head WP Division, Dr. Rakesh Kumar, uh, Wood Properties Division, Mr. Uh, Mr. V. S. Gautam, and other staff of WPU Division for their continual support and guidance in organizing today's webinar. This webinar could not have been organized without the support of IT, uh, IT team. Last but not the least, I thank the IT cell, for, uh, IT cell of IWST for providing necessary support in webcasting this webinar. Once again, I thank one and all. Thank you.